It's time for Twig this week in Google. Hang on to your hats. Jeff Jarvis, Stacy Higginbotham, and I, we're going to talk about Google, but we're also going to talk about a whole bunch of other things. I don't even know where to start. Just stay tuned and fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 448, recorded Wednesday, March 14th, 2018. Raspberry Pi Day. This Week in Google is brought to you by Casper, a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. You can save $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash twig and using the promo code twig at checkout. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash twig. And by Wink, the best way to discover new wines you'll love. Go to trywink.com slash twig to get $20 off your first shipment. It's time for Twig this week in Google. And we are going to Google today with uh, Stacy Higginbotham from Stacy on IoT at Giga Stacy on Twitter. And my, uh, my very wonderful co panelist at South by Southwest last week. Have all the uh, geeks left town, Stacy? Oh, no, they're still here. Well, most of the geeks have left, and now we're up to music. Music. And then so now film. it's the LA producers. No, film kind of goes throughout the whole thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you some stuff, and I wish I had uh, gotten tickets to it. I'll tell you that in a second. First, let's say hi to Jeff Jarvis, professor of journalism at the City University of New York. It's great to see you. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome back, welcome. boss. Thank you. I ain't your boss. <laughs> <laughs> I love the onion. Did you see that Elon Musk is is going to be starting some sort of strange onion comp comedy? Competitor? He's well. I think Elon shouldn't do comedy, but that's you know. <laughs> You, you know, missed him at he South does everything by. else. Was he funny at South by? Um, he sang. He sang. What? I don't know if he's funny, and he and he cited Kanye West as his uh, was it his favorite musician? Did he rap or sing? Uh, singy rappy. It's hard to say. Singy, it wasn't like singy rappy. Hold on, let's see. Uh, he had a sold out talk at South by. You know, there were South by's come back. I think. Mm, no, 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 <laughs> no. He's saying my Australian little buttercup from the, the Oh, the little buttercup, my little buttercup. Na, 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 na. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Gilbert and Sullivan, right? He's uh, created a company, according to this, uh, called FUD, T-H-U-D exclamation mark, which is going to be... Boy, that's a master of the universe picture. I think he wants to be Indiana Jones, Jones or Han <laughs> Solo or something. I'd love him. He's wearing we a bomber like jacket with a fake fur collar. And, and the uh, black t-shirt. And the black t-shirt. And his hair has been carefully quaffed to look as if it's not carefully not quaffed. Cool. Yes. <laughs> and somebody, he's got the five o'clock shout out. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It was he, early, to be fair. He uh, he tweeted uh, early this morning that he, because we knew he was hired that he apparently att attempted to buy the onion at some at one point. Which right now is probably for sale. Get a deal. Yeah. So he hired uh, former staffers of the onion, including editor-in-chief Cole Bolton, executive editor Ben Berkeley, uh, and uh, he's going to start something called the thud, or thud, maybe just thud. No, the, just thud. Thud. He says, this is Elon, it's pretty obvious comedy is the next frontier after electric vehicles, space exploration, and brain-computer <laughs> interfaces. That's I don't funny. know why anyone's not seeing this. That, that, that That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. He's got some humor. I mean, he did The Boring Company. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's been planning this uh, for a while. The registration for thud.com was December 6, 2017 through GoDaddy. 
Oh, Elon. <laughs> oh, Elon. <laughs> he's, you know, he's not Jeff Bezos rich, but he's one fifth Jeff Bezos rich, which is plenty. Uh, doesn't he have a 20, lot of loans? 20 billion. Oh, yeah, he may owe money. Yeah, he's not terribly liquid, I don't think. Yeah, but you know, yeah, he, that's not him. Probably that's probably yes. his companies, right? That's no, true. he he put a lot. He put all of his PayPal money into I his companies, I and I feel like Variety yeah. says he's worth twenty billion. I'm sorry, Forbes says he's worth twenty billion. Oh well, we all trust and love Forbes and their their <laughs> estimates of people's wealth. Well, they are the ones who do the Fortune 500 or whatever the no. No, they do, the Forbes they do the Forbes richest. Fortune does a fortune. <laughs> yes. You know, there's a clue in there. Uh, <laughs> I'll let you which find Which one did Donald Trump want to be spanked with? <laughs> it helps you make him straight. It, that's not a visual I ever want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, so he made a lot of money for from PayPal. Not anything like his current net worth, but... Uh, you know, he, PayPal was only sold to eBay for one point four billion, but he's he's parlayed it. Uh, SpaceX is worth more than twenty billion. Tesla, I don't know how much Tesla's worth. That that depends on on your outlook for Tesla. Do you still love your Tesla? I do, although it has started rebooting. Yeah, um, the screen reboots <laughs> sometimes when I'm driving. Yeah, I don't know if they when wear you're it driving? that well. Yeah. It's all right. You can still drive. Uh, yeah. it's just, you, can't. you can still drive. But I will tell you, in Texas, the air conditioning also goes. So your Ooh, music, your nav, good. and your yeah. AC go. And yeah. you're like, oh. It's so basically pretty much you can steer. Can you open Getting the window? Here. Yeah. yeah, you can open the window. I guess in the Model 3, could are there still window things or is everything oh, in the dash? Oh, everything's in that dash. And they've. Uh, I read a story from somebody who's had a bad screen. And it really, <laughs> it was really a problem. <laughs> Until Tesla replaced it, because it's all, there's no controls; it's all on that screen. So, uh, Leo, by, by by the question, do I sense that you're uh, will bloom off the, the rose? Bloom with you? is off the rose. That's a good. That's wow. a good way to put it. Um, wow. I, it's I'm almost two years in. It'll be two years in in July, and it's getting a little janky, getting a little funky. And mm -hmm. uh, wait, you know, funky or janky? Janky. Those are well, important <laughs> distinctions. My 12 volt <laughs> battery died a year, in, almost two years old, and a 12 volt battery died. And then, uh, and then I called to replace it a week ago, and they were supposed to call me back, and they didn't call me back. They didn't call me back. So finally, I mean, I called several times, like three times, left messages because they do a what nice thing is they do a mobile repair, but they didn't. You know, they, it was like, come on, guys, it's, uh, <laughs> and you can't bring a Tesla down to your local. You know, Jiffy Lube, <laughs> you have to get them to fix it. And so finally, I, I called them again. She said, oh, I was just about to call you. Oh, so, well, they called me like a dozen times over a not like with a 12 volt battery issue, Leo. And I didn't have an issue. So I was like, please, I'm good. My my battery is me. fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently the, the 12 volt accessory batteries uh, die rapidly on Tesla's, which is ironic since they have a 90 kilowatt hour or whatever it is battery yeah. pack in there but for some reason they use a separate accessory battery and so so the resale's good right i mean do you buy or you lease i lease it i don't really care but i'm gonna I, i'm gonna stay electric i really like electric i'm not i love I the way my car so drives. what would you get would you get a little bmw or there's gonna be lots of choices you know july 2019 when my lease runs out there'll be lots of good choices i think uh what else? you know the new well the jaguar uh pace what is it the i pace just came out um, is that all electric? All electric. Oh. 90, well, you can 90, also get the go ahead. VW bu bus. No, that's not out yet. But when that comes out, I'm definitely getting that. <laughs> it's the love <laughs> bus. Uh, but VW so how, just the, bought uh, what, $20 billion worth of batteries or something, right? Jesus. Mm -hmm. What's the range for the Jaguar? Same as the, uh, it's a 90, 90, what, what is that, kilowatt hour? It's 240 miles. So, so does the bus get you more range because it just has so much room for battery? Big? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I'll have to look into it. it I don't know. Oh, if, that's a Jaguar? That's nice looking. I know. It's an SUV. Yeah. I'm not crazy about an SUV. I'd rather have an no. XKE or an XJ. But uh, still, I think I'm going to buy my next car from a company that makes cars. That's a thought. Anyway. Oh, really? Okay. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Still, Call I, me crazy. I still love my Tesla. I would have done the Model 3, but we decided it was just... I didn't want to spend, I think it was going to be the first one was like 50, yeah. 50 K for basically what I wanted. I was like, uh, I, I got my invitation wealthy. to build my model three. Mm -hmm. You haven't, or you did. I got the invitation and I declined it 
till next year. I said, I'm waiting for the dual motor four wheel mm -hmm. drive version, but I wow. also just deferring, but I was surprised because I ordered it much after the long, you know, the, the rush. Why do you need four wheel drive? You don't have snow. I just like, it's more sure footed. To have oh, it. I see. It is. I it's like, like driving a mountain goat. <laughs> Nothing's like driving a mountain goat, Stacy. <laughs> have you ever driven a mountain goat? I have not. Trust but, you know, me. that's what I envision when I see them, like, up there in the nature shows. They're up there. Or the those, or like, those wow. uh, Grand Canyon mules. Yeah, I haven't I haven't ever ridden on one of those. So, yeah, VW is very aggressively going into the electric. Uh, VW is, by the way, Audi as well as Volkswagen. $25 billion in batteries. VW is planning wow. to build 3 million electric cars by the year 2025. This is the bus you're talking about, but that's a concept. The, uh, no, 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 there's a date coming up, though. They put it, there's a, oh. I think there's a date. I would love a Volkswagen. I used to have a Volkswagen. We used to, I grew up with a Volkswagen Bug. And uh, yeah, the ID Buzz and the self driving ID Vision due in 2020. So, but anyway, I figure by a year and a half from now, there'll be lots more choices. Or we're at nuclear war with Korea, one or the other. Or yeah. there'll be no choice at all. Yeah. Ta-da! Yeah, won't that be something? Um, all right, let's move on to topics of the hour. We now uh, know Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, Google's World Developers Conference, Facebook's Developers Conference, and Microsoft's Developers Conference, and they're all roughly in the same two-month period. Yeah, I'm going to have to come out to California twice in two weeks. <laughs> That's crazy. You're coming to F8 and I.O. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think my I think Microsoft, though, uh, gets... I'm sorry, Apple gets the uh, award for the best website. Uh, let me open up the WWDC website because it's, it's, it's really quite pretty. Uh, Apple.com... Slash developer, developers, developers, developers. Let me let me reload it, and you'll see the sweet anim. Hey, now the animation is not working on on this. Oh, oh, I have to uh, click that. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, I was like, are you in Safari? <laughs> yeah, no, it does. It doesn't actually work in uh, Chrome for me. But I, but I, yeah. If I click this, I think it will. Now nah, we're gonna. Yeah, look at this. Dum, bum, 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 bum. I want to do the Game of Thrones theme. Bum, 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 bum. WWDC. Anyway. Google has a... So, Jeff was mad at me because I discovered three words two years after he picked it on Google, on This Week in Google. The three words that... You forgot all of these links that we put up. I forgot, forgot all of it. Yes, well, I'm, it's uh, one of the good I'm things upset. about uh, getting to be a certain age. I, I don't remember much. <laughs> no, it's, about, it's about going through 3,000 links a week. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I was all excited about this idea that you could uh, you could describe any 10, 10 meter by 10 meter square on the world's on the Earth's planet with three words. And uh, but Google has got its own thing. So the reason is a lot of the world is not does not have street addresses. Uh, India, so for did instance. You did you do it for the Twit Brick House? I did, and I ordered a uh, a, a, a a sign. I haven't gotten it yet. I think it's what is it? Nasal? It's I know nasal's in there. It's, it's the three words. So one of the things the what three words guys uh, did and said, and they said this on they did this on purpose, is that there's no similarity between squares and their adjacencies to avoid accidentally entering something close but not the same so if you made a mistake in the three words it would be very obvious like oh i didn't really want to go to the middle of the pacific ocean i'm just trying to go downtown uh but google's done the opposite so they've come up with a new global code system they're calling plus codes it is an Hold open on. source one second leo because yeah. you lost me at your, you never actually told us what Jeff thought. So I'm listening to you describe three oh, words. Oh no, just that I did. This, I I revealed the three words on this show a good two years before Leo thought he'd discovered them. Yeah, so and I got pissy. Do you? He what, didn't get pissy. What are the? You don't remember that? Oh, maybe you words? weren't here. Okay, so what? I wasn't oh, here, so here. I have no oh. idea what you. I'm like, so, what are you guys talking about? So let me go to Twit uh, LLC. <laughs> so this is what three words dot com. We had them on um, one of our shows. 
And then, so the three words for a twit are glow, walnut, nasal. So you, <laughs> you, <laughs> what you do is if you have a Mercedes, the new Mercedes will support this in its nav system. So really? you can say, navigate to glow, walnut, nasal, and it'll take you right there. Uh, huh. And it's, but so you could actually have different three words for the back of the building and the front of the buildings. It would actually be for the front door, glow, walnut, nasal, because it's 10 meters square. So every place in the world, so, so let me, India or places that don't have street addresses or Africa, um, have where you have a lot words. of places that don't have street signs up, you can navigate somewhere. Exactly. So let me, right. let, so here's Antone's nightclub in Austin, Texas. It's three words are smashes transmitted evoked. So, and that would take you right there. Now, it's not just, by the way, developing nations. In Venice, it's very hard to deliver mail because they don't have street addresses. <laughs> And you're in the, you know, that's actually a very highly skilled job. The the post post office person. Well, then how do you do the, How do you do the sequence though that says that the smash olives piano is next door is it, the, the next place I'm going to deliver the email is to walnuts, <laughs> fezes, water. Oh, that's the that's the Mexic Mexican art museum in downtown Austin. Actually, uh, so. Yeah, that's an interesting question. You have a the, the way what three words works is it doesn't you could enter it in their map or you could send it from their map the GPS coordinates to a regular map and use that. So yeah, you're right with the postal service that might be complicated. What Google's proposing is more like kind of like zip codes. You have a four yeah. character and I say character cuz it's numbers or letters area code and then you have a seven character local code. So it's a lot like your phone number. Except it's not just numbers. It's got it's got and it's harder. It's like it's like British postal codes. It's it harder is. to remember when it's a mix of numbers and letters. Right. right. Um, it also has, I think, a mistake, which the folks at What Three Words were uh, didn't. You know, when we did What Three Words, they were quick to point out. Oh, listen to my Samsung phone. That's the that I'll be showing the S9 in a bit. That's what Samsung thinks a ringtone should sound like. It's like a symphony. Like you're in an elevator. <laughs> yeah. It's like the doors of the elevator opened. I'm not going to so I don't want to be, I don't wanna be racist. That's a bad way to start a sentence. You should yeah, stop sure there. Is. I'm like, you know what? If you don't, just stop then, there. Then don't. Then don't. It's more cultural than racism. But, but South Korea, the aesthetics of phones created in South Korea, Samsung particularly, it's clearly culturally very different from... Ooh, more Rococo. Well, it's just different. I mean, I, I mean, I celebrate the difference. I'm going to be in Korea next month. I'm, I can't wait. But oh. uh, that there is a... But that culture... So sometimes companies uh, take pains to kind of gloss over you know make it more americanized they samsung i don't know if they do a good job of that so that's like that ringtone is like i don't i don't think that really is a good ringtone but maybe it plays well in korea i don't know uh, did I, I i might as well show you did i show you the uh creepy ar emojis this is my i'll show you my ar actually you know what i could do it on google photos by now it's probably oh no maybe it hasn't because i haven't uploaded it i'll do it in the gallery there's my lovely wife, and there's some pictures of me and Jason and Megan with our. It's not a Snapchat filter; it's an AR emoji. And sunglasses. Here, here's what it thinks I look like. Oh, you look like Anderson Cooper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we all look alike, all us white guys. Uh, so that's the AR emoji. And as Brian X Chen said in the New York Times, he did a review featuring his AR emojis. Not really very good. But okay. It's just not Apple Apple quality. I'll do more on this phone in a bit, but that's I thought you'd want to. So you were you were saying that Google made a mistake and it's Yeah. So okay. I'm sorry, I'm so discursive today. That's why we're here. Um they so first of all, the first four codes, first four characters in the area code, a hundred by a hundred kilometers. And then the last six characters Six? Seven. I thought it was seven. Oh, maybe the plus doesn't count. The plus is just a character. Or the plus is just a character. They say the last six characters are the local code. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I've got a plus in mind, too. I think the plus is there just as a separator. 
And but they, I have I have seven plus the plus. Oh. My address. Uh, Maybe because uh, your local you know, area is so many people. No. Well, the the last six characters are the local code, and that gets down to fourteen by fourteen meters. The area code is not needed with navigating within a tent, obviously, but there is another optional character that could be appended to provide oh, that's why more accuracy so, down to three yeah, by three. So what, yeah, that's why. So, so I increased the size of the map and then clicked on the spot, that's so it gave me got. the extra character. That's what you got. got so where, where do I want the drone to land? <laughs> well, so, that's probably what this is for, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I get that not every place has addresses, but why go with something complicated as opposed to something easy for people to remember? I guess it's for computers because we just assume computers take us everywhere. Well, that's why I liked what three words. Thank you, Jeff, yeah. for that tip because it's human. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay now. <laughs> so you can remember Glow Walnut Nasal uh, a lot better than I can HEC2CMXR plus X6. That's. Now, I remember talking to Tim Berners-Lee, the guy who created the World Wide Web, and he said, I never intended anybody to see HTTP colon slash slash. That was always, a, that was, those URIs were always intended for machines. What he underestimated was how that would become, you know, saying www.twit.tv would become a way well, of That's what led to the QCAT. You remember the yeah, QCAT? Yeah, the QCAT. So, no one's ever going to deal with these complicated URLs. It's, it's my guess that that Google says the same thing about these codes. That oh, these are mach these are, and boy, you nailed it, Jeff. That's clearly what this is for: is drones. Oh yeah, because I can actually, if I pull like my house, okay, you can, you can get your not, roof right. I can get the front of my house. Oh, I can get roof. the middle of my house and the back of my house. Oh, have you have you done it for your address there, Leo? No. How do, do I do it. that? Show, where, show do the I, process. where do uh, I? In that story, it had a link to how to do it. Okay. Uh, I just Toward got a bottom. plus code. HTTPS slash <laughs> slash colon slash slash, colon slash, slash plus. You forgot plus the colon, Stacey. It won't work without the colon. <laughs> right. I did for half. Tim Berners-Lee, I got it. Um, okay. Open. It's based on open location code, a standalone open source library. Um, here's the world's largest <laughs> carrot. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, plus dot codes, is, plus, codes, plus yeah. dot codes. Okay. Here we go. What makes it unique, free, accessible. So let Enter me. Enter a city or plus code. See, you now what was nice, uh, I wonder if I could put twit LLC because Twick. What, what was nice is I put twit LLC in the, what, three words and it knew where we were. Yeah, it does. Okay. There you go. So our code in Petaluma is 78GM plus M6. Now, if you if you go up, um, uh, expand the size of the map, you know, plus it. Yeah. I'll get no, 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 more. Other way. Other way. I'll go other in, way. zoom in. Go in, go in, yeah. So, now, cause, cause this, has got, more, this has the front door box. in it. This is where the front door is, right? Yeah. So I can do a smaller box. box. Oh, look. There you go. So there. That's, that's the front door right there. So that's, that's the z landing spot for the drone. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You could just pinpoint it, right? Go, yeah, to, exactly. go to our roof. Oh, yeah. See the last letters uh, changing change then yeah yeah and but they are square so buildings that aren't square it's kind of like like i'm, I'm looking over one of my old apartment complexes just to see like ooh, would that even get to me well they said they can do picky, as picky, picky. high resolution change the world three you're, meters you're, you're by three meters square. which is 10 feet by 10 feet i would guess you're not going to land a drone anywhere where you don't have 10 by 10 at least free right yeah. Right. Well, that's that's a big. I was actually talking to an architect at a party about like they're going to design houses landing pads. Drone landing. Holy yeah, cow! He's like, oh, how really? do you think about where drones land? I've got a great place because I've got a flat roof, but you know that's everybody else is screwed. Um, yeah. So you're gonna just like you know they design ships with a big H and a circle on it. If you're gonna land yeah. helicopters, you're gonna have to drive drone, and probably they'll have to have some sort of optical signal and maybe even some lighting signals. The reason it's interesting is because New Zealand just approved a test of drone delivery. Uh, Didn't we just approve one too? This is I think we've got somewhere in the U.S. Well, we had a, Domino's a, doing uh, pizza delivery, right? Uh, no, hold on. But this is uh, who is this that's doing the drone delivery? Is it Amazon in New Zealand? Well, the other thing New Zealand just approved, or I think approved. Is Larry's 
Air Taxi Company. That's the one I was thinking of. Sorry. Larry's Air Taxi Company. Yes. The, the uh, drone. The Cora is an electric human. sky Uber drone from Sebastian Thrun. Larry Page funded it. Thrun, of course, was the former head of the X, Google X. And creator of the self-driving car, Google. Yes. It's Cora, which is a vertical takeoff and landing personal airplane helicopter drone that will carry a, pa a passenger. Oh, that's not much use. This I want. But what's interesting yes. is, look at if you look at, it really is stealth, because look at the front. It looks like there's a dashboard and, you know, windows. Uh, so, and but they're tinted, so you can't tell if there's a driver. And they've people have seen these, are never sure if they, they can't see a driver. That's because there is no driver. Otherwise known as a pilot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <driver>. So, <laughs> the, the, WS, driver. <laughs> the Wall Street there's Journal. A, there's no liveryman. How, does it without a liveryman? <laughs> How do they do without pages? Uh, footman. I so, need a footman to open the door. Sorry. Go ahead, Stacey. No, that's okay. I'm answering the question about drone delivery in the U.S. So according to the Wall Street Journal at a FAA UAS symposium last week, Jay Merkel, a senior FAA air traffic control official, said that some proponents of drones, such as Amazon, quote, think they might be ready to operate this summer. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I see. We poo-pooed this. Remember what, how we laughed oh, yeah. Yeah. when... Um, the 60 Minutes piece, with was it with Larry Page? No, it was Jeff Bezos. And Charlie, yes. uh, Charlie he's in uh, disgrace now, uh, Rose. Rose, was so, he was getting all wowed about it, yeah. Was so uh, incredibly wowed because yeah. Bezos did this reveal. And look, here's where we test the drones for delivery. And we were laughing. We said Charlie Rose got played. They're <laughs> never going to do that. Wrong. I guess if you have fully autonomous drones that really know how to avoid everything, power lines, other drones, you could have thousands in the air. Birds. Birds, everything. You could have, but it's still it's still better than a street, right? I mean, there's a lot more stuff on the ground. You could, well, the idea really is enough. that... Go ahead, Susie. That you could reduce a lot of transport, or some transportation traffic, right. I think, from right. the street. Yeah. Well, and after all, Amazon's biggest expense at this point is delivery, right? Has to be. Shipping. Mm. Shipping. I don't know if it's the biggest, but it was a huge, I think last year it was like a $7 billion loss for them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, so. it's, it's one thing that can stand in the way of profit. Uh, is, Amazon doesn't care about profit. <laughs> <laughs> well, at some point they're going to, and if they do, drones. I like, they, they do care. They, they have a very macro Thing. They have they a long term. About excessive they have problems. a long term focus, and bravo. And that's one of the reasons they uh, were seriously looking at drone delivery. And it's almost helpless. Well, you remember, remember the UPS uh, video from last a year ago, where the, mm -hmm. the brown truck arrives, and then out of it come a bunch of drones oh, wow. to nearby addresses. Oh wow! I'll put that, I'll put that up. That's an interesting idea. So it's the it's last model, mile. Isn't it? Yeah, it solves the last uh, mile problem. Uh, oh, here we go. Right, so you don't have drones going all over the, the hell of Ohio. Right. Come on, come on. Although you could. It just would black out the sun for a period of time. There you go. Got it. <laughs> I'm thinking a lot of deliveries. I'm like, I'm like, the, I'm like during Christmas season, what happens? We don't see <laughs> the sun dark. anymore. It got dark. <laughs> oh, it's just Christmas. It would be loud. I mean, that's one thing. I mean, when you hear it's the drones around. Like, Friday. Drones are loud, yeah. They're they loud. That's the problem. I'm like, ugh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not excited by drones to the extent other people are. I, yeah. I just they're they're loud. They're irritating. They. I don't know. I like looking at the sky. That that may be part of my problem. I'm, a, I'm from Texas. I love my horizons. Well, you know why so, uh, you don't. Uh, you know this is why I don't like drones. This is uh, thank you chat room for this link to the Tinkersons. Let's see if we can fly the drone. The father says to the son. The drone goes up in the air and then zip. Let's see if we can find the drone. <laughs> That's pretty much my drone story in a nutshell. So if you're into this, people out there in the world, there's a conference that I, in the early days I helped organize. I haven't been able to be there for the last two years, but really nice guy named John Keller runs called Postal Vision 2020. You're kidding. And it's about the future of delivery and the postal service. Oh, MG. And fascinating. Oh. I got, we got Tim Berners-Lee to, to, I'm sorry, we got um, Vince Cerf 
to keynote, you know, Fun. early on. Fun. Um, and and they've had drone companies there and new package companies there and all kinds of things. If it's you know, logistics are actually pretty damn fascinating because it's about atoms. Mm -hmm. What do you do about atoms? So uh, I'm going to have to ask you about this, Stacy, because you have the wired home. By the way, I asked Stacy's husband Andrew how he felt about all that. He was, <laughs> he was, he was, I met Andrew. It was great in Austin. Oh, he was pretty. Uh, he was surprisingly sanguine about the whole thing. The only thing he seemed like uh, was an issue was something about the blinds. Ah! <laughs> this is a three-year effort. I have these crazy proprietary blinds. I bought this thing to convert it to Z-Wave. It is a monstrosity. It has a click wheel. So when I program it, I have to get my little screwdriver and move the click wheel. And it's a nightmare. Mom, um, why is the house always dark? <laughs> Shush. It'll be fixed in a like year. We have perfectly acceptable remote controllers, but he wants it to be, he wants to talk to it. And it's, oh, it's also his fault. Are you, Are you saying it's Andrew's You're fault? Him? No, no, I'm not blaming him. He just, <laughs> it, every year for, he's like, it's my birthday, Stacy. Maybe we can make the blinds work again. Cause they did <laughs> for so a little cute. bit. That's, so cute. That's what my wife says about getting expense accounts done. Yeah. Every, every couple has one of those, you know, just this yeah. running joke. It's the, how you load the dishwasher. Yeah, well, that's a big one. It is. We're, yeah. we're, we're total in agreement on that. Fork tines up or down? It doesn't matter. I oh, think that's why we're in agreement. That's why we're you're in agreement? Like, yeah. You don't have a strong opinion. But we do have a strong opinion about the toilet paper roll. You roll over. Of but course. our daughter, our daughter does it under. Savage. Where did she get that? <laughs> ah. No, she's just so young. She doesn't understand physics yet. No, I've explained it to her. She's still, she, she chooses to do it that way. She's, I, should I nip her personality in the no, bud? No, this is called rebellion, and it's just the beginning, Stacey. <laughs> just right. well, I, the I'll beginning. I'll accept that as my, my rebellion, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not bad. All right, I'm going to give you a video that you'll like as a result. Hold on. Okay. Here we go. The next one up. Meanwhile, I'm going to ask oh, Stacey in a little bit, as soon as I see About this. routines? Here it is. I you, I got it. That's the one you sent, right? No, I sent one earlier. No, that's this one's not showing up. Oh. I'll put it on the rundown under other. Darn, sorry. It ruins the punchline. Okay, it's in the blank uh, We just edited it. it. There you go. We just edited it to the punchline. This is how a thud is going to work. Is that the worst name for a, a humor site? Well, thud? I'm like, you always say a joke landed with a thud when it's not successful. Yeah. But sure. The exclamation right. point, though, really makes you enthusiastic. Thud. <laughs> Thud. Thud. Like Yahoo. I'm thinking it's probably an acronym. Okay. <sighs> oh, there it is. Got it. Did it? Did it help that I typed hello? Did that like? Uh, yes, I somehow it did free. Yeah, it, un it un why. unlocked it somehow. I thought it might. Oh. I have everyone any... say hi to Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Kevin. Get Kevin, hey, Kevin. Get Kevin on. Get Kevin on. He just sent me his plus code. Oh, nice. Oh. Here is a story. Is this Kramer? No. Wait a minute. It's like the fake Seinfeld. Watch me. This is, uh, this is mad about you. Oh, yeah. Voila. Yeah, guys, never. This is, you know why everybody's laughing? Because they recognize it. It's true. <laughs> it is true. It's true. They ne got because well I don't there's reasons for that. But not good ones. <laughs> not good ones. <laughs> no, <laughs> not good ones. All right. Google Assistant's multi-step smart home routines are now live. I knew when I saw this headline, there was only one person who could explain it all to me. Mm -hmm. Stacy, it's not me. Yeah, it's it not Stacy. So I am so sad because I don't have this. Oh. So no. that was. So I don't have it yet, but I do have opinions on it. They're because rolling never it out? Let, they are still rolling it out. Um, I was really disappointed with this. So there's there's reasons. Okay, so it's good in the sense that it shows you how it, it helps a novice person who has some of these devices think about their morning routine and like what they might want to include because it's a checklist that you check off. Ah. The downside to this is... You can't do anything custom. So if you're like the hardcore smart home user, you're going to look at this and be like, Rah, I want to do more. 
And then you're probably going to turn to Google shortcuts oh. and then you're going to be extra frustrated oh. because Google shortcuts oh. is awful. Oh, uh, I have uh, Google shortcuts to me is one of the most frustrating user experiences I've ever encountered because it feels like it should be easy. You tell it good morning and then you're like, and this is what I want you to do. But because Google has some weird naming, Google home has weird naming conventions and because it doesn't tell you when you do something wrong. Oh. I have a lot of shortcuts I've tried. They don't work. And I don't know why. So I have to like basically remove one item at a time and try to reverse engineer my way back to like a working state and then add again to see what the heck I did wrong. I hate it. <sighs> so why? I'm not too, I mean, if you're into routines, you know, if it works for you and these, these options are great. Like I like the bedtime one where it's like put my phone on silent if you have an Android device. Yeah. Um, and like, I, so I would totally you use check use like that. last, uh, if this, then that, or, uh, you know, something like that for those. Isn't that easier? I, I do that, but maybe if is too much for people. Uh, if, if you don't want to use if, if you're like, oh, Google's letting me do these things, then maybe this is nice. So I also don't use my, oh, go ahead. At this point, you'd say X, Echo is probably a better choice for voice home automation or no? Uh. Yes, I, I started using my Google Home more and I find myself defaulting to the Echo for all but inquiries. Yeah. So, yes. Does uh, the Echo have multi, what is this multi-step They do, routines? they have multi, multi, <laughs> yes, they, they don't have routines. They have, uh, what do they call it? Hold on, I've got to look to see what they call it because I can never remember they're weird words. And then the echo this last week just allowed you to start saying things and following it up with more commands without having to say Madam A's name again, mm. which is nice. Okay, sorry. I'm I do like that. That's the follow-up thing. I misunderstood that. I thought it was like the contextual follow-up that Google's assistant does where you could say how tall is Shaquille O'Neal and then how fat is he and then so get echo punched in the nose. But that's not what it is. It's just you say, once you say echo, the trigger word, whatever it is you've chosen once, you can then, I guess it keeps listening for a little bit of time. There's follow up. So no, actually what you're talking about is true. They have, sorry, I, I'm confused because my world There's is There's contextual follow up. Contextual follow up. And that's but then separate they also, from, don't, you don't have to say the trigger word twice in a row. Yes. Okay. But so going back to the beginning, because I'm on cold medicine and I have to stay focused. There is echo has routines too. At least you so, have an excuse. I have no excuse for how. <laughs> um, so echo does call their routines age. routines and it's the same sort of thing. You tell it to what you can say and then it offers you a lot of options. I don't know if you can see my phone. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it offers you options, but then it also lets you add your own. So right it's now, a little more Google flexible. Doesn't, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. So then Google added something important to this whole melange, which I put on the rundown, which is you can now do location-based reminders on Assistant. I love that feature. I've used that feature for a long time in Apple on iPhones. And uh, I think Keep does that as well, right? You could say to Keep, remind me, here's my grocery store it? list. Remind me, pop up that list when I get to the grocery store. Well, I had no idea. Oh, that's a nice feature. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. I used to have an ift recipe that when my husband got near the grocery store, it would text him. <laughs> oh, it's a I really need, nice feature. Ask me if I need stuff at the grocery store. That's really funny. But <laughs> That's good. Wait a minute. I might, have to, I might have to implement that. Well, so the downside is he always got a text even when he was just driving by the grocery <laughs> store, which is the intended function. But he was like, it's not so Stacey, bad. This is irritating. Stacey, the grocery store is right by our house. That's ultimately, unfortunately... The ultimately the most common response of a person married to a geek. This is annoying. Yes. Stop it. <laughs> it's it's like Seinfeld and Newman. Newman. Stacy. <laughs> so Keep has done this for a while, and I started oh, doing I it with no Apple's idea. reminders. So if you have a list or something, you can associate it like the pet I have the Petaluma Market uh, list. You can associate it with the Petaluma Market. And then um, I actually have to give my app permissions now to get uh, location information, which I guess I had turned off. So I'll do that right now. And now 
now that it's got permissions information, I can add a location to this. Uh, let's see. This is my, this is our shopping list. Oh, you know what would be good, though? Tie what? this to the more granular level of the plus codes. I think it already codes. did that because it's got the Petaluma Market thing. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's and why then, Google's value of the plus codes, right? Yeah, because then when my husband drives by, the, uh, he's not in aisle. the parking lot. Yeah. So there's the, so pin, can just there's be the like, pin icon that will say, I guess. That would make it less annoying. I like oh, this. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Edit reminder, place or time. So normally a reminder is time, you know, at four o'clock, remind me to mow the lawn. This is place, Petaluma Market. Wow. So whenever I get to that place. Could you place, put in a plus code? Not yet. Or maybe you could. You know what? That would be an easy enough thing for them to do, right? Because right now, yeah, I bet you you can because it pops Petaluma up the map. Petaluma Market means inside. Oh, uh, it uses the plus code. that would be much better. Yeah, that would be better. Because just, just like you, Stacy, this works when you're driving by, you're in the vicinity, mm -hmm. you're on the roof, whatever. And you don't necessarily want that. So that's good. If you had a plus code for the front door of a, the market, and that's when it popped up, that's exactly, that would eliminate some of these yeah. uh, false alarms. Yeah, because one, one of my things that I'm constantly looking for in my smart home implementations is actually walking through the door-based reminders. So when I leave my front door, right. I want a reminder like right. jacket. Yeah, Sk like check karate the stove. Gear, whatever. Yeah, lock. Yeah, what, yeah. Whatever needs to, like, yeah. what you need to bring for your day. Yeah. And so now, so, far, so is this? That work. So that's something new, though. They're going to have location. How is that going to work with a static device location reminders? It just let you add it to the reminder somehow. Is this an Echo like or Google I Home? forgot? Is this in Google Home or an Echo? I think it's Google Assistant. Aren't we talking Assistant. about that? Oh, Assistant would make sense because that would be in your phone. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. We're all losing it. I just, uh, yeah, I, uh, I just have too many things on my stack. I blew my stack. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so um, Google Routines support page is live. And actually, they care about this a lot because I sat on it for a minute or two and I got a pop-up saying, would you like some help from a service representative? Ooh. Yeah. So I'm surprised it's not available to you. Well, that's what I'm like. I'm like, Google, come on. So right love. now they have good morning, bedtime, leaving home. Uh, oh, you could do this to the assistant. So you could say, hey, Google, I'm home. So that's kind of location-based Hey, Google, uh, as well. Right? <gasps> I just got it. Yay. Woo! How do you know you have it? How do, where do you go? Uh, sorry. Oh, you go into, hold on, settings for your, in their Google Home or Google Assistant app. And if you scroll down to services, you'll see music, home control, news, routines. Nice. Oh, look. Okay. My, I'm totally, I'm doing the good morning. And this doesn't get, require uh, a Google Home. This is, or is it? Does it? It does. Uh, it's not uh, your... Oh, it's I see. It's your Google Assistant, but it's on the Google Home. Right. Yeah. Because I'm going to talk to the... Well, I guess I could talk to my Google Home on any device because it's telling me what devices this is available on. Right. Cancel. Okay. So I'm going to take my phone off silent. I'm going to adjust some lights. I'm going to adjust my thermostat. And you, this would be whenever you say, I'm home. I'm going to... It's when I say, good morning, tell me about my day, or I'm up. Those are... Oh, can I add a so command? So this is nice. Yes, I can add a command. So it's much more functional than the Amazon then. Oh. Uh, no, Amazon's the same sort of functionality. Okay. See, this is a problem because here we are, presumably experts, certainly seasoned users of these devices. Yeah. And we this is like we haven't set this up. I haven't set it up no. on the Echo and it would and it sounds great when you described it. I love all that. But I don't, I just. I well, so think, Google makes it, uh, that's what Google's trying to do. So like here I am, it's showing, I don't know. Hold on. Let me dim my screen for y'all. Um, so here it's showing me. Ta-da. That's a whole long list. And you could check those boxes too. To I'm checking on. these boxes. Now, yeah. when it says, tell me about today's calendar, I'm still hosed because I can't get my uh, G Suite calendar right. information. But I can on, Madam, or on the Echo. Oh, interesting. So. That's why I prefer to ask her about like what's on my schedule today, which is just aggravating. And then so 
it has me adjust the media value, volume, it says, and then play music, news, radio, podcast, audiobook, or nothing. Nice. Mm, let's see what. Oh, so yeah, and this the audiobooks is only Google Play Books, which one would expect, I suppose. So discard. There you go. Let's take a break. More to come. <laughs> Leo and Jeff are confused show. <laughs> Stacy too. To I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> Our show today. <laughs> this is my Friday. That's the only excuse I have to offer. This is my Friday. I'm on the I'm already on my weekend. Our show today brought to you by my mattress. I did, I have to say, I can't blame it on a bad night's sleep. Those Casper mattresses, man, you sleep so good. Oh, I love my Casper mattress. Casper is an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the cost. You know how they do that? They eliminated the number one reason mattresses cost so much, dealing with resellers and showrooms. By eliminating those costs and passing the savings on to you, you're going to save a huge amount. Now, what they don't have is a place you can go lie in a Casper. Well, they do actually in some places like New York City, but in most places... The, the idea is that, you you know, lying on a mattress in a showroom isn't going to do you any good anyway because that's not a real test. You need to get your Casper in your house, lie on it for a night or two or three or a hundred. And if at any time in the first hundred nights you don't love your mattress, you just call them, they'll come and get it, refund you every penny, there'll be no, so there's no risk, no risk at all. The original Casper mattress combines the multiple supportive memory foams they kind of pioneered this for a sleep surface with just the right sink, yet just the right bounce. Plus, its breathable design lets you sleep cool. That's so important. Even in the winter, even when it's snowing outside, you've got the heater on, you get overheated, and that's not good. But the Casper mattress helps you regulate your temperature throughout the night, so you're always comfortable. And it provides long-lasting comfort and support, and I really like that. And it's risk-free. I mean you got to try this. Casper understands the importance of trying out a mattress. That's why they give you 100 days. And it makes you feel a little bit better because you you know there's no risk. Free shipping and returns in the U.S. and the Canada and the U.K. And by the way, they come in a very compact box. You open the box and whoosh, the mattress comes out. It's ready to sleep on. You don't have to air it out or anything. It just feels great, smells great right away. Uh, it's good. I actually, both my kids ended up with, in the dorms with Casper mattresses because, uh, well, it was nice to have a fresh new mattress and the cost was low enough that I didn't mind. And it was easy. I shipped it to them in the box. They just, they could carry the box upstairs. Henry was on the third floor. It's easy. I think he might've gotten a friend and, uh, to help him. And then boom, it opens it up and there it goes. And it was so affordable after four years. I said, leave it there. You, you don't need to bring it back. It's okay. Leave it for the next guy. Get a Casper mattress today. You can save $50 towards select mattresses by going to casper.com slash twig and use the promo code TWIG, twig, at checkout. $50 towards select mattresses. Terms and conditions apply. Casper.com slash twig. Got to use that promo code if you want to get the $50 off. We love Casper. We thank them so much for making Breaking our news. show possible. Breaking news. This just in. Breaking news. This just in. <laughs> Nacho fries become Taco Bell's oh. highest selling product. Oh. I don't even want to know what that is. Selling you don't know more about than 53 million orders in the first five weeks. If it has to do with queso, it's relevant to this show. Do we really want to call Taco Bell's cheesy sauce queso? <laughs> I'm just asking. I mean, I eat at Taco Bell like any other fool, but. So explain to me. Burritos. This looks like a French fry. Is it made out of potato? It is, it is a, a potato. Fry. It's their take on fries. They have I a Taco Bell spicy. seasoning. Seasoning. And then you dip it in cheese instead of ketchup. It's cheesy fries. And you can't get the cheese. They don't, they don't, they don't offer the cheese with chips or anything. They just offer it with the Can you get fries. ketchup if you want ketchup? No. I know. You go to McDonald's for ketchup. <laughs> 53 million orders in five weeks. Oh my God. It's kind of mind-boggling, like mind isn't it? Yeah, that's why I actually buy my Mexican food from actual 
Mexican food shops in Petaluma. Did you have any queso in, uh, in Austin? I did. Yeah. Now, uh, tell me if I went to the wrong place. I went to Uncle Julio's. That's all right, yeah. It was all right. <laughs> we didn't know. You know, I have to say, we 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 went to Franklin's. Tried to go to Franklin's barbecue, and it, literally, that's crazy. You can I don't know who oh. goes there. Oh yeah, don't go during South by. <laughs> don't go there ever. Yeah. Six in the morning. It's a six-hour wait. We got there. I thought, oh, okay. Well, I know not to go in the morning. Nobody ever gets in. So, or I mean, you get in, but you wait six hours. I'm not waiting six hours for lunch. So then we go around noon, figuring, well, people will be gone by then. No, the lady said she offered me a beer, which was nice from her bucket. And she said, it'll be about two hours. And I said, will there be anything left? She said, there's no guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> so we left. We went back downtown and we went to a place called Cooper's. It was amazing. Cooper's is not bad barbecue. Really, it's Texas. You can't get bad barbecue. It I was mean, you very can. good. That's a moment where Stacy should have the uh, glove in her in her home. <laughs> Leo yeah, could I told then you run. to order. Look, the order side eye you just got, Stacy. Where should I, I have know. gone? I don't know. I didn't know. Well, no, no. Franklin's is okay. See, this is what's wrong with our foodie culture. People yeah. like go and eat perfectly good barbecue, and they're like fomoing. They over make a fetish the best of it. Barbecue. Yeah, they make a fetish. Yeah, yeah. you, can't you got good barbecue. barbecue. You know, I got great barbecue, and I frankly thought Uncle Julio's was fine. They made guacamole at the table. That was awesome. Many places make guacamole. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 like you know, <laughs> that's like table. Steak, I'm easily okay? amused. <laughs> they had a tortilla making machine. Oh no, you have to have the I old wanted grandma the, making I wanted the, the mama Sita making them by hand, but that's all right. She was there, but she was putting the balls of dough in the machine. It was going That wasn't quite as good. When I was in Mexico, uh, that was the best tortillas I've ever had where she, the, you know the grandma was stand, standing there making them by hand. They were so good. <gasps> you did see the Brooklyn barbecue, didn't you? What's Brooklyn barbecue? Well, that was a story 2 weeks ago. I just put it up in the rundown. Obviously, it's I'm actually a picture falling of behind. Wait, it was it was last week. What's the Brooklyn? Um, March five is when this happened. What in is it? Brooklyn put barbecue. Put it in the comments. Does You'll see the picture. The picture says it all. De Blasio decides if Texas or Brooklyn has the best barbecue. That one? No, no I, I put I put it in the rundown. Oh, Vice claims Brooklyn barbecue is world famous. Now it is in the worst way possible. <laughs> Why is Brooklyn barbecue to well, take? Look at the picture. This is in Brooklyn. It's in Brooklyn. That's barbecue as as, as defined by Brooklyn. Mm, so yeah. it's hipster barbecue. Yeah. Oh no! See that sauce? <gasps> That's yum. They would never. Fried okra. Fried I do okra. like fried okra. Uh, but see, I, what I liked about Texas barbecue, and we talked to that guy John from ATX, the Instagram mm. guy, the ATX uh, barbecue guy, who. <laughs> Texas Monthly named the top 50 Texas barbecues. He went to all of them in 38 days. <laughs> he's a f And he's he a wasn't dead when we saw him. He was amazing. still alive, although both he and Stacy used a term I had never heard before that kind of scared me, meat sweat. It's it's the meat sweats. It's it's what happens after you eat too much meat and your body is struggling to process it and you get this the meat sweats. I can't believe you've never heard this. <laughs> only in Texas. No, I've never not only not heard it, I've never had it. Well, that's that's actually probably good for you. And after a certain age, you should probably not go. The meat to get sweats it. are the first sign of a heart attack at my age. Yeah, so that's it's, probably true. Either you've got the meat sweats or you're dead. So Wait. what I learned from John, who's great, is that in Texas, it ain't the sauce. In fact, sauce is kind of deprecated. It's the, it's the dry rub. Um, yes. And so he said, test it via, brisket. he said, get the brisket. It's the only way to know if yeah. it's good barbecue is how the brisket is. Yes. In Texas, we are brisket people. I so, didn't know this. I wish I had and known And you don't that. get lean brisket. You no, get the fatty fat, mix. That's what fatty he said. Brisket. He said yeah. you want USDA prime, whatever the highest level is, brisket with lots of marbling. I didn't even know brisket could be marbled. I thought the whole point of barbecue oh, yeah. was taking the worst meat cuts possible and cooking them long enough so they didn't taste bad. But as it turns out, you can get good brisket. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Did you not Sorry, get brisket? Audience, I did that. No, I didn't know. I always get the links, and I'd like pork ribs. 
Please so no. I love you this. You missed out on Texas barbecue. I know. I'm going back. I have to go back. Can I? I'll see you this weekend. Okay. I blew it. Come hang out. I'll brisket. take you. I'll take you places. Who knew? You get brisket. I apparently everybody I, knows except me. So I love this response. This is uh, Kansas City compared to Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Kansas City on the top. The Brooklyn barbecue you can't get into. And Sanford Johnson tweets, I've seen Southerns from all walks of life come together to condemn this struggle plate. Brooklyn barbecue. <laughs> it doesn't really look that appealing, does it? No. <laughs> and everybody who knows barbecue knows that you don't put like, what is this, a dinner roll? Yeah, you yeah that's what I was looking at. I was slice looking at of that white bread, plate. baby. Slice of Texas toast. This is Brooklyn this is this is uh, Cooper's barbecue in response. That is that's a pork. What is that? Pork or brisket? That's the brisket. Man, yeah, that looks good. And they had a sauce, Dang but it was it. a now very. I gotta, God, I gotta a, go get more barbecue. It was a thin <laughs> kind of vinegary sauce. It wasn't an all thick tomatoey sweet sauce. It's very good. That looks good on a surface tablet. <laughs> good enough to eat. So what's this Brooklyn barbecue? This is silly. This is not barbecue. This looks like I a prisoner's a last meal or something. Oh, you, that wouldn't be your last meal. Well, That'd be nah, cruel. This is what you get in solitary. Looks like that, yeah. Well, I was trying to read this men's fitness article for you on uh, the meat sweats. Oh, there's but a men's, started... men's health has the best articles, I swear to God. They, so they this are is the, men's fit. Oh, okay. Because I, fo I follow men's health on Twitter. It is the link baitiest crap you've ever seen. It gets me every time. And every time I hit myself, I go and I read the article and I go, oh, crap, I fell for men's health again. There you go. There you go. Oh. oh, it's called the thermic effect of feeding, where your body temperature rises after you down a ridiculous amount of food. <laughs> so there you go. But... Oh, even food and wine has one. Yes, the meat sweats are real. Here's how to survive them. Okay. Ta-da. Now you know more than you want to know about disgusting things. <laughs> Meanwhile, right, back in back Google on. land, yeah. France is nice suing Google and movie. Apple over developer contracts. Fines, they're seeking fines of 2 million euros over what it terms abusive contractual terms imposed by the tech giants on startups and developers. Just trying to find anything they can to sue them. They'll be suing them over parking tickets soon. France's finance minister, Bruno Lamarie, says, as powerful as they are, Google and Apple should not be able to treat our startups and our developers the way they do. I will therefore be taking Google and Apple to the Paris Commercial Court for abusive trade practices. <laughs> 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 Google says, <laughs> Google says, we believe our terms comply with French laws and are looking forward to making our case in court. And there you go. There's uh, <laughs> the EU story of the day. Bezos says he's going to spend his, quote, Amazon lottery winnings <laughs> on space travel. What does this mean he's going or? Oh, that's a good question. The he price, really wants to go, doesn't he? The price, here he is, by the way, eating something I don't even want to know. I guess it's an iguana. It's an iguana. Don't eat that iguanas. Picture gonna, That's, that picture is going to haunt him. That is horrible. It is. Don't eat iguanas, why? Why? Jeff. Why? 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 Where was he? Why? Somewhere not he around some here. Explorers club. The price to admission of, of space, the price of admission to space is very high, said Jeff. I am in the process of converting my Amazon lottery winnings into a much lower price of admission so we can go explore the solar system as they dined on iguana. Uh, maybe it's a delicacy somewhere. Well, I got to say, having been to the Galapagos, there are many, many iguanas. It's not like there's an iguana shortage. In but Costa Rica, there are many iguanas. You're many right. iguanas. Everywhere. But I don't think you should eat them. They're nice. They're sweet. They're kind. Are they sweet? Well, so are no. cows. Are kind? So are cows. True. You know, isn't that funny? It's very cultural, isn't it? it is. Pigs are smart. I stopped eating pork, which is really hard. Because pigs are nice? Because pigs are really smart. And I started thinking about eating something uh, that was I know. that you smart. You shouldn't eat anything mm. smart. Maybe you should eat more iguana. They're not <laughs> smart. <laughs> They're lizards. Yeah, I, I really don't. I, I don't want to eat a lizard. That just doesn't even look appealing. I mean, well, I've had snake, I guess, but... Yeah. That was just for fun. It would be fine if they hadn't left the like all of the parts on. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Pull off a little bit. <laughs> let's let's go back to space travel because this is an important moment. I think we've got to note here. Bezos is definitely okay. Bezos later declined to clarify how much of his fortune he'd spent on space travel. But Paulson at the next table said Bezos could spend it all if he leaves enough to take care of his mother. Bezos is definitely not leaving mom behind. She said she's going into space. She's already been on an ocean voyage to recover F1 rocket engines. Hey, keep reading. This is the funny part. A trip where the crew made accommodations for her, as Bezos recounted from the stage. When we first boarded the ship, the Norwegian captain, a very nice guy, he went to me and said, Mr. Bezos, I've taken the liberty because of your mother's on board. We never had a woman on board before, removing all the pornography from the common areas. I hope that's okay with you, I said. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's it's good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry I did that. To be sure, plenty of great women explorers have made out pretty well in a male-dominated world anyway. They talk about some women there. And this is Bloomberg technology. Bezos loves Earth, too. We've sent a lot of probes to every planet in the solar system. Believe me, this is the best one. You know, I'm glad to hear him say that because... Elon acts as if like, oh, we're going to save ourselves by going to Mars, and people. Mars who, is a terrible place. Yes, <laughs> I think I think Elton John said that, but it is, and uh, and it's very. It would be very very hard to make Mars into anything habitable for any reasonable number of people. So it's not Plan B in any in, in any normal scenario. So let's yeah. let's let's keep our planet okay. The idea of space as a backup to Earth, if destroyed, is unmotivating," said Bezos. "I want a world for my grandchildren's grandchildren to live in. I also want a dynamic world, a world that is expanding and growing. I do not believe in stasis, and this planet's finite. Well, that's a good you know what that's a good argument for exploring. I but but don't think it's because we're going to all move there. I think Jeff has his he's got a head a good head on his shoulders. I think this is a moment when we should um, talk about a space explorer par excellence who we lost today. Oh, you're right. And it's Even, and, uh, an explorer of the mind. Uh, and the cosmos. And the cosmos. And a brilliant <laughs> physicist and really an inspiration. Stephen Hawking, of course, passed away. And so I just put up links to Yuri Milner, uh, who... Um, Started the did he he started the the space exploration I'm saying that like thousands of little tiny spaceships yeah they, they I put it up on the link yeah um he but he did a tribute to uh, Hawking today and then Tony Hendra who sat next to Hawking in elementary school I did Tony not Hendra, know former that editor former editor of love um, Tony Hendra yeah so here's National Yuri Lampoon uh, Yuri Milner should I read that yeah just a second or third graph yeah. Um, I was greatly saddened to hear of the passing of Stephen Hawking when future historians consider who were the outstanding people of our age. They will think of Professor Hawking, some of the greatest insights concerning concerned the late. I, you know what? I'm going to have to read this uh, on it directly. I'm reading. I'm trying to read it off the TV screen. <laughs> That's not. Let me do that again. Um, where's the link? Where is the link? Facebook. Well, I'll, try, I'll do it. We now believe that the universe does not really forget anything. And as long as people... Oh, there it went. <laughs> <laughs> the Don't read it off the and TV screen. I told you. Wait a minute. are doing wait a minute. physics, his contribution will not be forgotten. So that was nice. That's good. The uh, Tony Hendra. Tony Hendra was former editor of, of, of um, National Lampoon. So yes. he too had a tribute. Here's reactions to... I think I have a link here. Uh, um... The Queen sends a message to Hawking's family, ex-wife deeply saddened. Uh, you saw the wonderful um, the wonderful movie. Here's Narendra Modi, Narendra Modi the uh, Prime Minister of India. Um, President Obama's uh, tribute. He's, oh, that's kind of sweet. Oh, this is a picture of, uh, of uh, President Obama and uh, Hawking's uh, daughter Lucy. And... Uh, Obama posted this and said, have fun out there among the stars. Mm. Hawking's so brief history from, of time yeah. is, a, is, is a lay person's introduction uh, to uh, deep physics, and it's, it is highly recommended. Uh, you should also watch the movie uh, with Eddie Redmayne playing uh, Stephen Hawking, The Theory yeah. of Everything. Uh, Redmayne said, we've lost a truly beautiful mind. There is an illustrated 
brief history that I have that I really like Hawking Supervised, um, this publication of it. It has, it's uh, highly, it's expanded and updated, has lots of great pictures. It's $85 in uh, hardcover, but this I highly recommend. There's a, a less expensive paperback. Mm -hmm. It was really, really gorgeous. Um, now I'm going to have to dig it out. Put it on my coffee table. So if I may, let me read just a, a little bit from uh, from Tony Henry's. Please. Uh, and Tony, as I say, sat, sat next to him. And, and uh, uh, they each took the exams for, for uh, the fancy schools. And one got into Oxford, one got into Cambridge. Uh, Tony says, considering the scope of his work, there's something felicitous in his dying on the same day Einstein was born. In the space-time continuum, birth, death, and dates are infinitely fungible. Marvelous if he could somehow also make possible for, for Hawking to discover that he was also right about God and the afterlife. But we will never know. I do know this. This scrawny kid who sat in front of me has redefined forever the paltry measures we have of what it means to succeed. And by his vast additions to the sum of human knowledge, as well as his demonstration of the incalculable power of the human spirit to survive, he has left the world a far better place than most of us ever will. Interesting, so. especially the part about God, since Hawking was a well-known atheist. Exactly, I think so is Tony, I would bet. Yeah. He believed in an, an impersonal God, but not a creator, I think, in, is uh, how, he, how he phrased it. Um, wow, yeah, thank you for reminding me, because that is... Uh, so, yeah, that's, I didn't mean to bring the show that down, is, but I think... No, that's important. really yeah. important. And, well, and, uh, you know, he led a rich, full life, uh, given his... Uh, uh, his illness and his and his handicap. I I've known it's... two people who've had ALS, and 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 the fact that they would survive a year on that horrible disease yeah. is amazing. amazing. And the fact that he survived so long on it yeah. is just the phenomenal. But it, the disease and the wheelchair be damned. He was, you know, having nothing to do with that. He was an amazing man. He also died on Pi Day, didn't he? Three, one, four. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Einstein's did he birthday pass on Pi Day. yesterday or did he to, or Actually, today? I think they said uh, Monday, I think is what they said, but I don't know. Oh, Monday. But it might have been wow. Pi okay. Day in the UK. It might have been Pi Day by then. No, today is Wednesday. So yes. we're geeking. But <laughs> see, the, this is the problem with time. <laughs> Tell me about time. <laughs> what is the problem with time, Leo? <laughs> it's relative. It's all relative. Uh, who who inherited my pixel buds? Did anybody uh, pick those up? I gave those away in the big Leo garage. Who was sale. bad at work? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I put them out. I put all my old stuff that I didn't want to keep uh, out on the uh, conference room table, including the pixel buds. Uh, but they have apparently improved controls for the pixel buds, which I I just never grew to love. You can finally double tap to skip songs. Ooh, uh, triple tapping has a new function. And finally, an in-ear detection feature will pause your music when you remove the right earbud. These are all features that uh, Apple's AirPods I'm never going to remember all those things. Yeah, I never use them on the AirPods, but, you know, it's nice you to start. Have. I mean, you start, once you start using them, you kind of, whatever works for you, you'll keep. I'll tell you what I that do use. Sense. I use the take one earbud out to pause it because that's a very natural thing. Somebody talks to you, you take out an earbud, it stops. You talk to. Well, them, I never knew that was the case. In. I always thought the music was continuing when I talked to somebody. No, it's oh. phenomenal. That's a that's actually that's an example of where somebody's really spending some energy thinking about how people use stuff and and doing yeah. the right thing. By the way, Microsoft cut cut its laptop prices yesterday on Pi Day by thirty one point four percent. I wish I'd known. <laughs> that's much more impressive than three point one. Yeah, it could have yes. been three. Could have been three point one four percent. Um. Let's take a break and talk a little more in just a bit. Jeff Jarvis from the City University of New York, buzzmachine.com, what would Google do, public parts, and more. And Stacy Higginbotham from uh, stacyoniot.com and her great podcast with Kevin Toffel, who's watching today. Our show today brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Now officially the biggest lender in the United States, number one, uh, according to uh, Inside Mortgage Finance, the number one online mortgage lender, number one in customer satisfaction, according to J.D. Power, number one in my heart because they created Rocket Mortgage, a fully online mortgage approval process. No more going to the bank. 
put on a tie, go on down there. The banker goes through a bunch of rigmarole and gives you a big, long form to fill out. And then you have to go to the attic and you get all the paperwork, your pay stubs and your check statements, call the bank saying, I need check statements for five years ago and on and on and on and on. And I mean, literally, the last time I bought a house four years ago, Lisa and I spent more than a month gathering paperwork to prove we were eligible for the mortgage. We got it in the end, but it took us weeks. Rocket mortgage, about eight minutes. Eight minutes. And you don't have to get off the couch. You could be at an open house with your smartphone. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash twig. Answer a few simple questions you know off the top of your head. Because they have got trusted relationships with all the financial institutions, you just have to give them permission to get the information. They'll get it for you. They crunch the numbers, and based on your income, your assets, and your credit, they tell you the home loans you qualify for. You choose the rate, the down payment, the term, and boom, you're done. Approved. Literally, at an open house, you could just show the realtor. We're approved. We'd like to make an offer. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Apply simply, understand fully. And then mortgage confidently. Rocketmortgage.com slash twig. Please use that URL. That way they know you saw it here. Rocketmortgage.com slash twig. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. And MLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. We thank Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans for putting this week in Google on the air. Rocketmortgage.com slash twig. So can I mention one quickly? Yeah. So Google just made a change that now if they know you subscribe to, let's say, The Economist or The Guardian or The New York Times, it will place that publication higher in ranking. Oh, that's great. You know, it's a really it's a, a battle is raging. I'm curious what you think about this because, you know, you're, you're the journalism expert. But it's pretty clear now uh, Apple just bought Texture, one of our sponsors, yep. which is the magazine app. It gives you 200 magazines mm. uh, for 10 bucks a month. It was founded by Condé Nast, the big magazine publishers, Condé Nast Time first, Mer Meredith, uh, uh, also Timing too. Rogers. So, yeah, so mm -hmm. it was it was clearly the magazine companies saying, well, we've got to find a digital platform. It really was great. It worked well. Apple bought them. Not clear what they're going to do. Eddie Q in an interview said, we're going to put some of it in our Apple News app. This sounds like, Jeff, a commitment from Apple to good journalism, Yes. Well, what you see happening now is that both Facebook and Google have, have committed to trying to help publishers with paywalls. And we can debate, you know, how effective paywalls are for every publisher, but but uh, I guess a magazine is the ultimate paywall, right? You have to subscribe the to the magazine is there it. too. So yeah. this is this is now Apple coming. And Apple's of course helped publishers for quite some time with paywalls. Um so I think you find that happening all, all across the board now. Is this in some ways I think it's uh the response to the fake news thing. Um <laughs> And I saw yeah. a good piece on uh, in Monday from Jean-Louis Gasset on his uh, site, The Monday Note, saying that these companies have to finally admit we are we are more than a platform. We are publishers. Well, you know, I'm going to argue against that. And and I wrote well, about that. Well, there's a side effect to it. There's a negative side effect because then they're responsible, right? Well, no, that's part part of it. Is 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 you get to the regulation piece, but the other part of it is the expectation that sets for what the internet is. When you call the net on a platform a publisher, it it brings to mind a packaged, edited, um, polished product, and the internet is not that. And so, you know, as I as I like to say, the internet is not the New York Times; it's Times Square. And and so, when we try, when we in media try to put it in our square hole, the round peg in our square hole, we set this expectation of what it is. And then what happens is when somebody schmutzes on the internet. Then the regulators come and say, oh, the internet's ruined. It's ruining society. It's ruining everything. And the moral panic ensues. So I argue strenuously that it is not a publisher and that that is an old style, old institution way to look at things. And it, and it, it, it informs nothing to put them in our box. Are you arguing that, though, just because you're worried about governmental interference or because they no. truly aren't publishers? Because They truly aren't publishers. There's something new, and we miss, the, we miss the opportunity to know what they really are. Ah, there's something in between platform and publisher. And we set expectations that are wrong for the Internet. The Internet's about speech. And, and just the whole notion of scale. I, I wrote this the other day that um, it's the scale of the net and the platforms that enables everyone to talk to anyone. It's also that same scale that makes it impossible to package it and clean it up and find that one ad with rubles um, because the scale is just so gigantic. 
and the scale is good and the scale makes it hard. But that's why we shouldn't think, oh, this is like putting out uh, Time magazine. Hey, they should be able to clean this up. Um, no. And it's an entirely different thing at a different scale with different use. And so, no, damn it, they're not publishers. Uh, end, of, end of spiel. Well, I'm glad that they're supporting good journalism. It sounds like they're supporting good journalism by supporting publishers, however. Yes, and they're also, but but you have Facebook trying to, we've talked about that often, how, how Google is looking at the authority, reliability, and, and quality of search results. Facebook is now um, looking at trying to bring back quality news. Uh, you saw the news that, that Twitter put out an RFP uh, to, to get help to figure out how Twitter affects uh, the health of the public conversation. So, they're, yeah, they're all now taking a stand. Uh, uh, Facebook today uh, banned the uh, far-right British party uh, for and its and its leaders for for hate speech. This is them trying to find standards. We valued the openness of the net before, and we all and people like me and you fought for the openness of the net. Yeah, and, and leave it yeah. open. And it, but and then people like gotta, Andrew Keane said it's the cult of the amateur. All these amateurs well, are going to flood. He was kind of right. Wait a minute now. He was kind of right. All these all these people are going to flood in. And the problem with completely democratized media is. Uh, yeah, it gives everybody a voice, and unfortunately, it gives a much more powerful voice to a tiny minority with vile thoughts. Well, that's and because we let them. That's because because we the system is architected and corrupt properly. That doesn't mean that openness is wrong. You know, I went it, I it, went to see uh, Black Panther a couple of nights ago. Which, by the way, well, I still haven't seen it. You must no, it's see. It's so good. It's, it's so it's, good. It's and I and it's good. I mean, it's a good movie. It's good. It's good Marvel comic stuff. But it's good to me for political reasons. I thought it was mm -hmm. very interesting because very strong women, without being uh, em, you know emasculating or um, you know, angry, but just being women that are strong and smart and and effective and funny. And then it, it showed African Americans, Africans, but also African Americans in a very very positive, powerful light. Uh, I didn't know this, but Te uh, Ta Tanahisi Coates has been writing the most yes. recent Black Panther comic mm -hmm. books. I had no yes. idea. And, and you know what he's writing next? What? Captain America. Awesome. So I he's, thought... He's nervous about it. What I thought, I'm sitting here watching this, and I, it reminded me, A, how powerful, what a powerful platform movies are. Because that movie's going to be seen, it's already a billion-dollar movie. It'll probably end up being the highest-grossing grossing movie, uh, certainly of the year, maybe of the decade, maybe of all time. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be huge. It's going to be seen by white people all over this country and by people of all colors all over the world. And I think that that is going to have a very strong positive effect for human rights. Uh, and so I was, and but then what it made me think is it's so powerful because the people using it know how to use it. And, and it's, and there's so much power in some of these platforms that it's okay that it's not fully democratized. I'm glad the trolls can't make a $50 million movie. <laughs> Seriously, Steve Bannon made movies, but no one saw them because they weren't good. Well, there's there's that, but there's also kind of the, oh, the acorn videos. The, what they do is they, they don't take Hollywood. And you could argue, actually, that uh, what was it? Mel Gibson's Passion of Christ was kind of... Yeah, but I mean, honestly, it's not nearly as – those things are m minor. They're not as damaging as the kind of dialogue that goes on on Twitter. Gone with the wind? I mean, you could argue yeah, that I up guess. until now we've had movies that have oh, denigrated – Oh, and I agree with that. No, I'm not saying that movies are good. I'm just saying it is is such a powerful platform that, it's, that I think it's not a bad thing that there have been gatekeepers maybe. Well, but let, let's – Now, let's admittedly – No, no, no. No, no, no. There were. It was a bad thing that there were gatekeepers because yeah, it so. stopped other people's stories from being right. told. Right. Exactly. But they're getting exactly. told now, and they're not getting told now because of YouTube. Um. No, I think I think that um, the internet enabled so many more voices to be heard and valued. It's because that, that it the, helped. The, 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 this is the culmination of years of democracy. In other words. So I'm. I'm yes. And, and, I'm, and Karsten I, I is, so. is pointing out he's. He's throwing a nonverbal argument in and he's putting the student <laughs> videos from Parkland. Uh, to, today, a lot of students walked out of classrooms all over the country to protest gun laws and to urge gun safety. 
And uh, and so this is a good, this is a really good example of, yeah, you're right. You're right. I don't think, it, you're right. So, so you could say, you could, it would be fair to say that Black Panther wouldn't exist if it hadn't been for. I, I don't want to be deterministic, but I think that it, that it has a um, uh, additive effect. I'm doing a lot of research right now, the, the big pile of books on, on mass society and mass culture. And if you go back to 1960, uh, the fear and the dread of what television was doing to the mind. And it was all awful. Yeah. And, and if you go back farther, what movies were doing. And of course, you go back farther, it was eventually way back was books. And, and, and this notion that we are incapable and we need these gatekeepers, we need high culture and high culture is being ruined by this, this low stuff. And it's kind of an anti-Americanism. And so we're seeing the same thing now. That's what, that's what Andrew Keene does to an extent, right? It's the snobbish, elitist yep. so view. It's in a nutshell and, what Andrew Keene said, yes. Yeah, and we're trying to figure out, but what we're doing is, this is why what Facebook and Google and Twitter are doing is important. They're now for the first time trying to realize that quality matters and they got to figure out WTF quality. And they don't know, and I don't know either. Uh, but they're trying to say a barrage of crap by people who are manipulating the platform is no good. So we're going to have to find some way to variegate here and some way to figure that out. And they're just beginning. And it's going to be a hard process because they're going to go too far. And satire is getting killed in Germany and, and elsewhere now um, because of the new laws. But they'll figure it out. They'll, they'll get there. We'll get there. And we'll say, listen, that's a crappy experience for us. And that's a good experience. So give me more of the good. Okay, you're right. Oh, I'm not, but... I was all excited because I thought, this is an example of the power of, of, of a, a mainstream motion picture to change, I think, to change the minds of millions of people. Or, yeah, but Stacey's point a, is really right. All way. the stories that never got told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, you're absolutely I mean, right. I mean, as a woman watching movies and having my like daughter, who is yeah. way more alert to sexism than I am, good, good, there's so right. many movies that she is like... Yeah. Why would I watch this? It's crap. Well, and, you know, and her generation's been subjected to all these Disney princesses and, yeah. Well, okay, all gener I mean, my generation was subjected to Disney princesses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just I glad she I can sing all the words to the Ariel song. But I'm Part just glad that she's that she's sensitized to it. That's good. It's my doing. Good job, Mom. Good. We don't have a lot of boring conversations about gender <laughs> <laughs> inequality at our house. <laughs> uh, yeah. It is a good movie. You should go see it, Jeff. Oh, I can't wait to. I'm dying to. I, what I really also want to watch is, uh, what is it called? Lenin is Dead? Oh, I was. I thought you were going to say Annihilation because I'm actually looking to buy tickets for tonight. Stalin I'm like, is Ooh. dead. Stalin is Stalin dead. Stalin is dead. Duh, duh, duh. Thank you. Well, they're both <laughs> dead, but Stalin Slight is dead is a movie. True. Yeah. Stalin is dead. Oh, have you seen the, the trailer? It's called death, uh, The Death of Stalin. Death of Stalin. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Hilarious uh, trailer. It's a con political satire. Yes. Oh, Armando Iannucci wrote it. He, oh, it's, I love him. Great. He writes great political satire. He's one of my favorites. I was wondering if we'd ever see another movie from him. He did. Uh, he did uh, the movie that and TV show that Veep was based on. Oh, Nitro. that would be nice. Yeah, he is. Uh, what, what was the name of it? I'm, I'm trying to remember. Um, the thick of it. Which is a fabulous sitcom, yes, and in the great. in the loop with uh, was such a good movie. Um, yeah, he's I good. oh, I can't wait to see it. That will be Trailers great. Up. Okay, if you can. Well, no, we don't have to show a trailer. Everybody should go see that. And then, uh, and then what, what, what else? Uh, what else do you see that? Uh, what was so, uh, Annihilation? You're going to see that. What's Tuesday Annihilation? Season? What's that all about? That's um, it's a remake of a not a horror, a sci-fi trilogy. Um, the movie is supposedly very different. Um, it stars Natalie Portman. They is it a go, young adult book? Or is this another Hunger Games? No, no, th oh. this is not a, no, this, is, <laughs> this is a different dystopian. Get off they, my lawn. <laughs> they're, they go into this thing called The Shimmer, Ooh. where reality is different and something about alien life forms. Oh, this Maybe looks I really don't good. Really You're going to see that tonight, huh? I think so. Yeah, nice. It's like Andrew's got plans to do something else. So I'm like, oh. Now, was it you who told me to get the book Autonomous? Yes, so I want to hate it or no, I'm reading. Like it. I'm loving it. And we're interviewing, okay. uh, Annalie, uh, on Friday. Do you want to join us? Oh, um, Friday, 3 PM Pacific, which would be 5 PM your time. Think about mm -hmm. it. I'll you can Skype it. in. If you want to meet yeah, Annalie yeah. Newitz, uh, you could meet her and we'd talk about the book and. Man, you, she's been like a hero of mine. Cause she founded IO9 way back in the day. So yeah. She's like super on, awesome. You want to get on that show, don't you? Come on. I know you've got, you've got a life I, and everything. I, but my daughter's been out. Of, she's been at downtown or 
downtown. She's been out of town. She's since. been downtown since Tuesday, and I've got to go get her. No, basically, oh, you, she's you been in Houston since South by Sunday. Southwest? <laughs> yeah, because usually we're busy, and my parents, you know what? You know, they live in Houston. They want to see her. Why doesn't your daughter join us and interview her? She has not read the book. It's okay. She can get that. Youth, I feel like some of the themes in the book might be kind of adult. A little. Well, it's a little not adult. adult. It's about big pharma. It's about uh, t some amazing autonomous. Uh, and 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 indentured the robots are amazing. Robots. Yeah, the indentured yeah. robots. Yeah, love. very interesting issues that she raises. Um, she, she is reading what's it called? Zahara, Zahara, the Windseeker, which ooh. is yes. a really good looking book. Yes, I've seen the cover. <laughs> and I don't know how to pronounce the writer writer's name. Yeah, Nidi Okafor. Well, um, it's an older book. At least but, three p.m. Pacific, uh, six p.m. Eastern. 2200 UTC Friday. If you are fans of Annalie Newitz or want to find out more from the founding editor of io9 about her new novel, this must be her first novel, right? It's really It's good. her first novel, but not her first book. Really no. good. Autonomous. Great sci-fi. Uh, really? She wrote uh, how, how we'll escape extinction or how we're going to evolve after oh, extinction. Okay. Uh, oh. Happy thoughts. The, yeah. the Great Migration. It, it's something about how we'll survive after the world goes nuclear or life ends. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, wait, someone's talking about Red Sparrow, which I don't think you should see. I saw it. I love really? the books. The books, the books are amazing. I've read the entire trilogy. They are so good. I cannot recommend the them enough. The movie is like a gore fest of yeah, beating it up looks like on that. Jennifer Lawrence. I don't, yeah. I don't know no, why she wanted really? to do that. It's, yeah. no, it's, I could not watch. Like it was so like, She's good. It looked painful. I agree. Yeah. So don't don't Thanks watch it. It's really awful. Yeah. But read the books. The books are great. Are you disappointed? We were all excited about the post. Are you disappointed that no Academy Awards for uh, for the post? No. Nah. 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 Those people it's, have it was plenty. A piece in time. It was a piece in time. I don't think it was one of the greatest movies ever made. It was a very good movie, but I don't think it was. Um, I think it was, it was no shape journalists of water. going nuts. Shape of Water was. Good, although it was a little like the creature from the Black Lagoon, <laughs> but it was, it was good. Uh, I would have I would have liked less rubber costume, more. Uh, but the rest of it was fine. I really like him as a director. Um, anyway, since we're doing Entertainment Corner, yes, the cold opened last last week Saturday Night Live. Didn't see it was it. amazing. Which one it was, was this? Oh, it was uh, it yeah. was Mueller breaks up with um, collusion. <laughs> Yes. Okay, I will watch it. We won't do it. Watch, here. watch it when you have a chance. It, yeah. It's because it, it was it was really daring and wildly weirdly different. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's it's. it's do you watch? Uh, you stay up late on Saturday? No, oh, no, no one does. I'm too old. No one does. Come on, Howard Stern. Yeah, time. No one does that anymore. They have a YouTube channel. I know. That's yeah, really, that's, you know, it's funny because when YouTube first started, one of the things that almost killed it was NBC. It was the thing that made it was clips. Like yes. taking a box from Saturday Night Live. And one of the things that almost killed it was NBC furiously suing them. And CBS did too. The of them did, yeah. And but then it then it turned then I guess they backed down because they realized, you know, this is actually pretty good promotion. More people are watching Saturday Night Live than ever have before. And yet I have to say, there's no reason to watch Saturday Night Live. And they, they get ad revenue from oh, well, they got a whole generation they wouldn't get. They get ad revenue, I guess from that's that. they get promotion. Right. It's yeah. and it's just the way of the world. You can't you can't buck what are you the audience do? for that long. What are you going to yeah. do? You can't you can't uh, you can't. Although my daughter there. runs around saying like a boss all the time, like and I'm like, have you have you seen that, Anna? <laughs> well, that's just because it's, it's got part of the culture, but that's how, it, it has become. How it. She's like, happens. no, no, I haven't. There's somebody who sings a song on Animal Jam, which is one of the games she plays. Animal. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Well, if if you happen to see it and you want to talk to me afterwards, you know, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> she is one lucky sixth grader. That's all I can say. She's got a good mom. Look what look. You know what moms like to do in my neck of the woods? Here we go. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. I whined and pleaded and begged. Do you know Thank about these you. guys? Yeah. Yes. You do. 
No, I knew about them because I saw I'm Lisa. I'm a mom. I'm the target market, apparently. <laughs> no, actually, Lisa bragged about about uh, I don't know where to put modeling it. Gonna, this sponsor. This is a great sponsor. We all sent. Now you're in uh, New Jersey, which has very restrictive rules about yes. sending wine. But I think you can still get Wink because Wink is a wine maker. They're not a wine distributor, so you're getting oh. it from the wine maker. And actually, it was pretty smart of them. Wink, uh, W I N C, which I guess stands for Wine Club. Is so much better than a wine club. I it is a wine club, but it's. I mean, look, this is for people who probably, uh, you know, well, for sure, over twenty one, and probably drink wine a little bit, but maybe you'd like to find a better wine, or maybe you're drinking the same wine every night or every day, every week, and you'd like to try something else, or you'd like to get a little more sophisticated about your. I'm trying to find a place to put this. I wanted to show you the box because it comes in this nice box, four bottles a month. You can skip any month. Uh, you can choose the bottles. Let me actually start with the wine quiz because that's kind of the fun, the fun part about Wink. T R Y W I N C dot com slash twig. Okay, you can go right right now, and um, we of course have a deal. You're going to get uh, twenty dollars off your first shipment. But the fun part about this what is that code, Leo? What is that code? <laughs> Just try Wink dot com slash twig. Uh, you'll, in fact, if you go there, you'll see at the top it says your twenty dollars discount will be applied at checkout just by going there. But here's the here's the onboarding that I really love, and you can do this if you want. How do you like your coffee? Strong and black, mild but nothing in it, with cream and or sugar frappuccinoed. I don't like coffee. Jeff, what do you, what do you pick? Um, on? I, I was just I was going back here. How about you, Stacy? What say, do you like? I'll, I, um, I say with sugar. With sh this is me too, cream, cream and or sugar. Only sugar, but I will drink it black if I have to. Okay. How about you, Jeff? A mild, but nothing in it. All right. Well, well, you know what? This is just a test. Salt. Do you like salt? I put it on oh, everything. I use it sometimes, oh. but it bothers me. If food's under salted. I like the taste, but I don't miss it when it's not on my food. Take it or leave it. Don't really like the salty stuff. You, you, Jeff, put it on everything. How about you, everything. Stacey? I use it sometimes. Bothers me when it's not salted. Yeah. Citrus, wow. the more mouth puckering, the better. Like it, don't love it. Drink the occasional glass of OJ. Nah, nope, not at all. You you get yes. where we're, you get where yeah, we're going like here, it. right? Do you like yeah. earthy flavors like mushrooms and black truffles? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> more or less eat dirt. <laughs> more or less eat dirt. Who doesn't love truffles, right? Blackberries, raspberries, blueberries. Do you love berries? Do you yes. like the flavors, but you like them? Yeah, I like that one. Eat yeah. them raw. All right. How invent now? Don't think wine yet, but you I know, could. I know, but I like them too much. Right? Yeah, very. Yeah, I know but what I you're like saying. I like this wine with a little pepper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You like a little pepper? All right. So based on what I just kind of made up here, I I gave hybrid answers from the two of you. So this may not be your package. But <laughs> this is we, the Stacy and Jeff amalgamation yeah, bottle. Right. So now you're going to build your box. You can you can get. By the way, you get to, if you like. You say I only want red. You can have four reds and no whites. You can have one white, the two whites, three whites. You get to choose. So I'm gonna let's do half and half. So it's recommending the 2016 Rosa Obscura Red Blend, uh, uh, Paz Ordinaire Red Blend, the Summer Water Rosé, which, by the way, is Ooh. I'm not a rosé fan, but when it gets hot out, you're going to want this chilled. And they've recommended a cider, the NV Eplevin Cider. They do some ciders. They make all of this themselves all over the, all over the world. So this is uh, from this is called Cape Root. It's from uh, Western Cape in South Africa. So this is a South African white. Uh, we have a red that we really, really love. A Pinot that's in the Santa from the Santa Barbara area. They, they uh, pick the grapes at midnight. They p literally, they pick them at night. This is very good too. I've had this 2016 Pinot from Santa Barbara. Here's the one. Uh, I think this is the Field Theory. Yeah, the Field Theory comes in a cool looking bottle. You can see it, and it is Ooh. this. You would know this maybe. It's a Blaufrankisch. It's a German style Blaufrankisch. And it is the, oh my gosh, this is delicious. So here's the deal with Wink. You sign up, you're going to get, these prices are amazing. Now, admit it, it's not too buck chuck, but this is really great wine from the winemakers. $13 bottles. I'm yes, that taste like $60 yeah. bottles. How about that? My rule that? is under 15 bucks. Yeah. This, this, these taste like $60 to $100 bottles. And by the way, you can go and buy individual bottles or a, a, you know, a case. If there's something you like, we bought a case of the Field Theory. They work with top winemakers and growers from around the world to make their own wine. Each month, there are new delicious wines like the 
very popular. As we get closer to the hot months, summer water rosé. They also partner with, as you can see, local artists to make beautiful labels. They're all works of art. Shipping is covered. And if you taste it and you don't like it, don't worry. You don't have to send it back. I asked them, I said, do I have to send it back? They said, no, 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 no. We don't want it back. <laughs> Just pour it out, give it to a friend. We'll send you a new bottle of something you'll love. No questions asked. They just go, no problem. It's on its way. So sit back and relax or celebrate with Wink. I We have become Wink fan. We got a big box the other day. We went down. We actually went down to uh, Marina Del Rey uh, a couple of weeks ago. I went. I wanted to meet the winemaker. And he told me some really interesting. Hi, here I am in Sonoma County. I've been here for 20 years. One of the prime wine growing regions of, Cal of California, of the world. And he told me some stuff about wine I did not know. For instance, there are a lot of places where people take their grapes and make their own wine, even though they don't have wineries. I didn't, I didn't, it's very common. And that, Wink will do that. Uh, they make their wines all over. Uh, with oh, you know there's a place in Austin that yeah. lets you make your own wines. Yeah. Even in New Jersey, yeah. Yeah. New Jersey wine. Yeah, I, did, I had no idea. Which is a joke, but huh. yes. Well, By I don't way, think they have I any... can get deliveries of everything except the champagne. Oh, there you go. Yeah, New Jersey wine has the among the most restrictive laws on uh, wine shipments. But they'll tell you once you put your uh, address in whether you can get it or not. In most cases, you can because they make their wine. So even the most restrictive states like New Jersey, if you're buying from the winemaker, it's okay. They just don't want... I guess, you know what it is? It's, it's probably, the distributor lobby. Yeah, it's the lobby. Frankly. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's, it, or the state licensing boards, depending yeah. on... Same reason you can't have a Tesla showroom in Texas. You know, it's just uh, the incumbents. You can have a showroom, you just can't have a dealership. Oh, pardon me. Yeah. <laughs> Look, get Wink, and it's a. It, I mean, it, if if you aren't drinking great wine, it's not. Look, four bottles a month. I'm not talking about every night, but but getting that nice date night, Saturday night. If uh, you want, to, you're going to visit friends, bringing them a bottle of this. We get lots more invitations out now because we bring them bottles of Field Theory. This is so good. <laughs> Trywink.com, T R Y W I N C dot com slash twig. Twenty dollars off. Your first order, you're going to love it. I really, this is one of my favorite sponsors. Uh, they're all my favorites. They're like my children. I love them all. But Wink, my mouth is watering. <laughs> I want to do my Wink. I'm like, how long, How when are we done with this show? Yeah. Go We're going to send you both. If we can figure it out, I think we can. We're gonna, we'll send oh, you both a, a little something special from Wink. Looking for I the field I theory think... on it. Um, well, there it is. There yeah. It is. Do you like Pinots? It's a, I do. It's like a Pinot. Yes. It's a little. It's a. Uh, it's a little fruity. From what you described, your taste. I think you would like the field theory. But don't. Don't. We'll send you. We'll send you some. Ooh. Okay. Any stories I missed? I missed a ton oh, of them on, because we were back. wandering okay. all over the place, and I we apologize. Were, <laughs> we Facebook, walked into entertainment, I know, entertainment I'm sorry. weekly kind we of territory. Just, yeah, no? Facebook is uh, streaming 25 Major League Baseball afternoon games, the games you probably wouldn't see normally. Um, uh, estimates are about 30 to 35 million dollars. Not not that expensive, and I think it's for Facebook an excuse to try live broadcasting. Let's just see what happens. They're all trying they, to figure it they out. They all want it. Twitter, Facebook, everybody wants to do it. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, Android Wear. Are who's still wearing Android Wear? No, because I, I saw this and I was like, no, one. really? They need more than a name change. I so, got one. Um, I haven't opened yet because it was yeah. only one hundred thirty-five dollars. Apple Watch just ate the universe. Uh, I, well, well I still I mean, an like, I'm an Android user, and I use a Fitbit instead. Do you like and these that, new? Uh, what do you think of these new Fitbits? This is their attempt to compete with Apple. Uh, they're using uh, some of the stuff they got from Pebble, I suspect. Not the iconic, but the new one that just came out. The yeah, the pre the the ladies one is it what it looks they, awfully they, big. Uh, they said they made it smaller. I I like my I have a charge too, and it I like it. It's a good form factor. It does everything I need it to be. This you know, is the I just Fitbit Versa, and it's Versa, really it. probably Fitbit's. I don't want to say dying gas, but the, but they are really. They are starting to lose. Everybody's starting to lose market share to Apple. Unfortunately, I like to see competition, and you're right. Well, I would like Android to see competition because I'm an Android user. Yeah, what do Android people yeah. do? I Wear OS, no. Android Wear, no. Yeah. Well, maybe try this. Uh, the Versa is two hundred bucks. Yeah. It's so fairly that's, inexpensive. That's kind of a lot more oh, than I want to spend on. Okay. Uh -huh. I just 
it's well, basically you don't an activity know. and sleep tracker and right. a heart rate tracker for right. me. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we'll get a review. We'll let you know. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. awfully, it's awfully big, but maybe it's, maybe that's, the, so they, they have sizes. Works with Apple, Android, and Windows phone. <laughs> oh, it's a focus on women's health. So they're going to have a, are they, yeah. let's see, period tracking? All right. So I got the Misfit Vapor for 140 bucks. The Misfit's not bad. I used Misfit uh, trackers before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't opened it up yet. It's been here for like three months. They, bought, they were bought Apparently. by Fossil. Ah. So. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, but really, the the story seems to be that wearables, with the exception of Apple's watches, are not doing all that well. It's not a great category. I think people don't need watches for one thing. I I I actually missed my watch. I never was one to like look at my phone because it was always in my bag. So I always like looking at my wrist to see. What you know what's time made it a is. difference for me is the always on um, notifications of my um, Pixel. That's something, by the way, Make a difference. that Apple still hasn't figured out has how to keep the, the watch on, how to tell time all the time. <laughs> they just can't seem to do that. So that's a little bit of a drawback. Yeah, the always on is very nice on the Pixel. I mean, I can see what time it is on both my Samsung and my Google phones right here. I can just look at it. So you're right. Well, yeah. Who needs a watch? Except they're if in, it's your, in your purse. I mean, if it's in your purse, if they're sense. in your purse or yeah. something like that. Your pocket. And again, I am I am the weird person who doesn't walk around with her phone. Don't you, don't you notice though when you when you go to is is it my it. is I don't go to a lot of meetings, but when I go to meetings, it seems kind of de rigueur. Everybody puts their phone on their table in front of them like that, right? Well, if I don't have no, because I mean no, if I don't have my yeah, phone, nice with people me, turn it over, but I don't. Oh, you're that guy. I, you know, no, when I we're out to eat or dinner table, the phone is not even around. I'm old Good school. for you. I, don't know. I just, I don't. We have things that great. Michael, 15 year old, <laughs> will sit at the phone with a table like eating dinner with the phone like this. And Lisa said, put the phone away. Actually, she starts to take it. He goes, no. And he puts it in his lap. And then he spends the rest of the dinner going like this <laughs> in, the, in his lap. And he's going to put the phone away. And then it gets in the pocket. And he's, it's, but he's very squirrely. There, I think I saw something on Medium about the the dark side of digital persuasion and how it's affecting kids. I think Mark Benioff tweeted it. Everybody's talking about that, right? Everybody's yeah. talking. You know what? I just put a, I just put a quote in today from my research about the addiction of uh, television and movies and how awful it was. <laughs> there, there People is go to movies to say, every week now. I can't. If you look it. at no, if you look at what Netflix is talking about doing with uh, badges for completing shows. Oh, please. Oh, my God. These gosh. kind of these kind of efforts, they do have an effect. Well, that's and why those shows start up after the first after a show ends. They start right into another show. They don't want to give you a chance to stop. And Jeff, Said I know you're going to call it techno panic. But sociologist Van Den Haag. Uh, one may turn to the mass media when lonely or bored, but mass media, once they become a habit, impair the capacity for meaningful experience. The habit feeds on itself, establishing a vicious circle as addictions do. They lessen people's capacity to experience life itself. But Jeff, would well, you disagree that with that? Go see a movie. Well, wait a minute, Jeff. Isn't that true? No. To the degree that you do it, if you spent five hours a night watching TV, would that not, in fact, That's have that exact? No. Oh. No. Yes. No. I mean, no. look at look we're at what happens at a dinner. It. There, there are so many times when we're out to eat and we look around and there's Nobody's whole families yeah. just doing this, and yeah. it's it's distressing. Maybe they're talking to their other families. <laughs> well, yes. If if someone has a family that is not supportive of them, but wouldn't you like to have have the chance to establish that relationship with your yeah, family? Yeah, sure. But but that's but but I, I think this notion that we're now putting. Um, phones in the same category as cocaine is a definite case of moral panic. Sorry, I don't. But, I don't know. think we're, I'm putting it in the case. Some of are. Cocaine. Some are. That's what so, okay. Saying. Some are. But I do think this is something we need to look at. We need to question, and we need to say, "Hey, do we really want to gamify binge watching for our kids to encourage them to do more?" Netflix does, sure. But do I, as a parent, think that's a great idea? No. Hey, kids, get your secret decoder ring. I yes, I I mean. <laughs> 
did people? It's just they've gotten better at it, Jeff. It's 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 gotten it's been weaponized. Got it. Do you, not, do, you, do you not think that it could have, a, that it could even be considered? Eating a bunch of sugary cereal has actually caused your generation yes. a lot of problems yes. to get those secret decoder rings. So I, I do think this is That you issue. found, that that's how we screw up the world. It's the damn secret decoder rings. <laughs> I'm just saying. And, and you know what, Stacey? Those Cracker Jack <laughs> secret prizes and the disappointment that comes led to a generation of cynics. <laughs> It might have. It might have, Jeff. Doesn't mean because it didn't. They, the prizes were really crappy. <laughs> you always hoped you were going to get something right. good. Zainab, and, and you realized that life was screwed up. Zainab to Ficky. YouTube, the great radicalizer, said something. She's observed something I've observed. I've been saying for a long time, one of the reasons you get people like Logan Paul on YouTube is there is a pressure towards ex extreme video. I mean, there has been on TV, too. We wouldn't have Morton Downey Jr. without it. But... She says, you know, she tried this out as an experiment, and that's all we can do since Google doesn't say how their YouTube it's a very algorithms piece, work. Though. It's a very what? Insightful piece. You agree? Well, yeah, she, because because what it says is that this notion that, oh, you like that? I'll give you something that's even more like that. More, li more extreme. It's then more very ex easy yes. to exploit. Right. And so you make that thing that is more like so that. So it's the nature of the YouTube algorithm and it works, or they wouldn't do it because it's. Comp I don't think these people are evilly planning this, plotting it in their lairs. I think it gets layers. exploited badly. But I do think that engineers create algorithms that optimize for the thing the company wants, which is more engagement, more viewing, and that's why you get algorithms that push you towards and the, more and, the and the more makers extreme in turn, videos. The makers in turn exploit that. I mean, the funny example she gave is you you watch vegetarian videos and it gives you vegan, right? You know, the next it's step. more extreme in every direction. <laughs> they value relevance, and relevance is a factor that can get played very easily. And so, I don't think it's—I I, I don't think it's fully true that we think, let's let's get the whole country into craziness. Yeah, we'll make money that way. I don't—I don't think. No, I don't think, no, I don't think they're doing that. But it's having that. You don't. Do you not agree that it is potentially at least dangerous? There are unintended that. consequences. There are consequences. Oh, I think it's intended by. But not necessarily by the platform in all cases. It's by the maker of the far right and far left crazy stuff. They recognize yeah, but the how platform's to complicit, just as it was after the Parkland shooting. Sometimes unknowingly. Sometimes uh, unknowingly. I, I would agree with you that it's completely unknowingly. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm not saying that Google and Facebook are, but they're optimizing. They're engineers, just as the engineers at World of Warcraft optimize for maximum playing time. They amp. They maximize for what the company wants, which is. Maximum engagement, maximum viewing time, that has this impa impact. And are there not societal and individual consequences to algorithms that drive you to spend all day watching ex more and more extreme videos on YouTube, as an example? Yes, but there are, are there also good uses of that kind of, of, of formula for relevance. Well, that doesn't, yes. But that doesn't excuse it. I'm doing... I'm doing research now, and as I dig through, I'm buying book after book after book after book because I see another footnote. I see another thing. That kind of relevance is the basis of these structures, and and there is a sensible, good basis for them. So what, is you, what should you two do? I think they should be – you're absolutely right. We're, we're agreeing here. I think that they should be aware of, number one, how it's manipulated, and number two, how it can be misused by users as well and figure out how – to not go into a rabbit hole. So you're saying I the, agree with that. the vegan video makers are at fault for this? No, I'm saying in that case, there's nothing harmful about saying you like vegetarian, maybe you like vegan. It was What's the harm? None. Yeah, None. But, well, I mean, it could be. You could become an extremist. An uh, extreme but it also vegan. says <laughs> there are extreme vegans. I, but I may not meet them in Austin. Austin. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gee, you, you ever like want extreme veganism? <laughs> the beer plant is oh, a brew pub. In vegan place in Austin, it actually is really good. Oh, okay, be. go for it. Move from San Francisco, right? Oh, did it? No, I'm, that's I don't a know. joke. It's, it's, oh, it's I'm a, like, yeah, maybe. You All the Californians are coming here anyway. You saw the science study, which actually proved something that it's obvious to anybody who's paying attention that fake news has more legs than real news. So be careful about about putting. This was a very smart study, but it wasn't as, as it was a very specific study from Deb Roy at MIT Media Lab. Right. Where they took a limited number of Twitter threads. 126,000. Right. And, the, and which is not that many when you get right down to it. 
And but they looked then at people's sh- habits of sharing things that had been specifically fact checked false versus true. And people equal to bots shared bad stuff more. No, bots did not. You missed the fascinating, I thought, side line. I thought on when this. they took the bots out, it was the when, same. No, yeah. So when bot traffic was added back to the mix, computer programs spread false and true news about equally. Oh, about equal. Oh, I misread that sentence. Yeah. Okay. Bots. Equally to that. Okay. So I the finding is humans rather than bots are primarily to blame for spreading fake news. Because, but who didn't know we love fake news? Yeah, we knew that. Uh, you but know, this is a verification. The, the second shooter on the grassy knoll. I mean, we've always loved fake news. We've always loved conspiracy theories. But this proves it. And what I think was important about this is you don't just blame bots or the Internet Research yes. Agency or Russians. We take responsibility. Blame humans. Patches. I'm working with somebody. I hope I'm working with somebody uh, who is going to try to do ad campaigns and more about, about and this is my phrase, responsible sharing. We all have a responsibility when we share. I do want to get that... Uh, Netflix binge watching uh, badge though. <laughs> <laughs> I watched all the seasons of Voltron. Yes. Yes. Which is actually a wonderful remake of the cartoon, but you know. <laughs> and I don't think Netflix or Google or Facebook does any of this because they're evil geniuses. They do you know, it because yeah, this, this, is their, their, this is what this is what a business does. It maximizes attention. Yeah. How sick did we get of four square badges? Right, it works for a little while, and but then we say, okay, I also that was have to Kids say. are very different. Kids are super different. Yeah. They collect all kinds. Have yeah. you seen the crap that they sell kids to collect? One of the I mean, reasons- I wouldn't, sorry. Go ahead. Pokemon the, cards. Garbage pail kids. One of the reasons I don't, mar- I don't like marketing and I don't market us very well is because I, I'm completely conscious of how we could try to manipulate our audience to get more viewing time, and I try not to do that. What would your best trick be? Oh, I mean, I could do much more link baity titles. I could have more cleavage. You could have more cleavage. You know, you you joke, but back in no. the days of tech TV, when we brought in a big time producer, the first thing he said is, "We need more cleavage on the screen." No. Centers. Yes. Uh, yeah. Safe. So let me rant momentarily for, about that. So today I was watching Katie Tour, who I think Tour, who is a great, I think, wonderful TV journalist, and she was wearing a dress that was a little bit low cut. No big deal. And so I, I was looking for a tweet of hers and I, I got creeped out by the men who were ugly in the dress. And then then I got depressed by the women who were scolding her for wearing the dress. It, it doesn't matter what she wears. Listen to what she says. She's really smart. She's a good journalist. But Jeff, you have, I have to say, you have a particular kind of blindness <laughs> to the fact. <laughs> what, that- Stacey, what are you? <laughs> what? <laughs> You just noticed this, Jeff? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. But Jesus, <laughs> it was, but on both, on both but she got it from both sides. This is every woman's life. I know, and moment. she gets it from both sides. It's just, and it would be that people were doing this in public. It's if they think it, but they were doing it. It just, I felt for Katie Tour and every woman, yes. But I'm, she, I'm sure she is, as are all She's, TV hosts, bombarded with the message, not necessarily explicit, that the sexier you are, the better you will do. And no, I, no, no, I guarantee you. I know it. I worked in television for many Jeff, years. It Jeff, doesn't have to be explicit, but no, it is okay. very much in the water. Uh, it is oftentimes <laughs> explicit, and it, and it's and it can be explicit, but it's but it's there, and there's a drumbeat, and it's and it's uh, and, and it's particularly aggravating when men can look. Old and have gravitas oh, yeah. and look right. schlubby right. and disgusting, and yeah. you're like, right. really? I know. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah there's yeah, yeah. There's no drumbeat for men to be sexier at all. I mean, maybe for younger men, but I never, I never felt any pressure to show more cleavage. I just want to be clear on that. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> I used to try, but they would. They actually would discourage it. Uh, so, yeah. I just, you know, and, and, and you can't, and so blaming the, I, I, you have to a little bit blame the platforms. You do because they have to learn how they're used and, and deal with that. They have to learn how they're misused and manipulated. And yes, they have to, they have to, they have to study that. I think that. it's they have fair for a platform or a publisher. Uh, I think it's, a, I mean, 
you know, I'm not as successful as I would like to be. We're successful enough. And I choose not to do the things that I think are morally suspect, like, you know, encouraging. I've, I always went around encouraging the, I would tell the young women who would join tech TV, be very careful. Try to project a smart image, not a sexy image, because as soon as you go down that path, you know, that way lies danger. And uh, you, you, even if it's not quite as successful, go for the smart person, not for the sexy person. But, but it's probably, by the way, bad career advice in both television and Instagram. Mm hmm. But it, but it's. But had you ever told me to go to the go the sexy route, I would have punched you like actually. Well, but but I was sincere <laughs> in, in saying, and 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 by the way, a lot of these young women would in fact wear low cut stuff because they they knew, whether mm -hmm. consciously or unconsciously, they knew that was not only what's expected of them, but that's what would work for their career. But but we also shouldn't. Um, judge them negatively for wearing what they want to wear. No, that's what I'm saying. I that's, judge the platform. Yes. I judge the publisher. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, where did we get, how did we get here? Farhad, I'm a little bit miffed with Farhad. Uh, His fake social media cleanse? Yeah. Yeah. And I like Farhad. He's been on our shows. He can drive me nuts at times. I can like him too, but he can also drive For me nuts. For two months, Farhad writes, I got my news from print newspapers. Here's what I learned. In, in what has become now a style of article from the New York Times, it is really grating on me. And is then only a week later, the New York Times does it again with the most ignorant man in America, the man who turned off yeah, all news. Yeah. It's just, this has become this, it's, it's the Something, worst of the fake New York Times trend story. Yeah. Trend stories are another kind of cleavage, by the way. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So what's sad Wait, not is... not always. Huh? Not always. No, not always. New York Times often the case. But, <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, I write a lot of trend stories about really geeky stuff. No, no, no. Because it allows me no, to no, geek no. out. These are these That's a different kind of trend lifestyle story. Trend That's stories. a real okay, trend like, no, story. I these, love those stories. Otherwise, I never get to write about yeah, things. These are fake lifestyle trend stories. That's a better one. Okay, yeah. 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 Got it. Sorry. And by the way, Farhan, during the entire two-month period he claimed not to be reading Twitter, was tweeting. Sometimes five, ten times a day, often retweeting news stories. <laughs> it was even more than that. It was a huge number. Yeah. It's like 35 times a day in some cases. So CJR called him on it, and the Times wouldn't do a correction and wouldn't apologize. The Columbia so, Journalism CJR Review. Being, yeah. Columbia Journalism Review, sorry. Yeah. When I read that, I went, oh, my God. Far hot. He, he tweeted perhaps more than a thousand times in this period. <laughs> How could you say I got off Twitter and then... Tweet! Doesn't that seem like... I don't know. And it just... What struck me about the about the other story, The Most Ignorant Man in America, is it was this. It was also this stance of privilege. Yeah. Well, I, I cannot worry about the world. You know, the fact that people are getting shot in the streets, well, it doesn't affect me because I'm, I'm okay. I mean, I think that's you know, a just, reasonable story just, if, you, if, if what your reaction is, well, this was a bad way to, you know, deal with uh, the election of President Trump. That's... You know, that's what this point of this article was. He wasn't happy about the election. He's a, so he's living a liberal fantasy by disconnecting. <laughs> but it's still a fake trend story. It's Let's find fake. one person, one anecdote of yeah. doing this. One and Nazi, blow one it up. guy, whatever, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uber has spent $10.7 billion in nine years uh, to continue to lose money. Well, Amazon. <laughs> Eric, because no, Amazon, Amazon is, isn't quite that bad. I know, I know, I know. Amazon can make money if they want to. Uber, oh, yeah. I don't think, could make money if they wanted to. Really. That's not their business model. Nobody would take Uber if they suddenly had to pay the actual cost of the ride. Um, they still have oh, uh, six billion cash on hand, but they've burned through... Uh, Quite are a bit. they biding time until safe self-driving cars come and and, and they're the platform we use? Is that the game? That's kind of the consensus seems to be they're looking they need enough runway. But that's a lot of <laughs> to runway. To get to some form of profitability not based on what they're doing today. <laughs> like delivering groceries or like delivering packages or like self-driving cars. If we could just get drivers out of the cars, we could be profitable. That kind of thing. Doesn't seem I, it's fascinating to me, and it's not the only company. There's Snap. Look at Snap. There's a lot of companies out there burning through a lot of cash with no real. 
profit. I mean, Twitter had its first profitable quarter ever last quarter. Um, all right, I think I think now we've covered all the uh, we we. Covered, I think, I think we, Stacey we, wants to run. Do we talk Taco about Taco Bell? Do we talk about nacho and try fries? Some of those cheese fries. Yeah, and did the, we I talk about meat sweats? Do we get those both in? Okay. We we got the meat sweats and Stacey? the Taco Bell cheesy Stacey, fries. Yes, sir. For the sake of the show, will you go try no. the nacho no. fries? I will. You don't I, only, to, I only eat one thing the, at Taco Bell's. What's that? What's that? It's the soft, the soft tacos, the beef soft tacos. Oh, and the nachos bel grande. But I stopped eating those because they stopped putting things that I liked on them. They changed it. So I used to love the enchilado back in the day. You know what? My favorite story about Petaluma is there's a Taco Bell's very popular, and right across the street, literally right across the street, is the best taco truck in town, maybe in all of Northern California. <laughs> and it's crowded and I'm happy. <laughs> and I love it that they just said, no, you know what? We're going to, we're, we're going to park right here. Let me give you some good tacos. Give you some good tacos. Taco Bell was founded by a guy who didn't want to compete with the hamburger stand across the street. The hamburger stand across the street, by the way, was the very first McDonald's. And Ooh, so now, gosh. you know, the rest know of the story. I didn't know that. Ooh. My pick of the week is the Galaxy S9 in vivid purple, a.k.a. what do they call it, lilac? Is, is it ultraviolet, the Pantone color of the year? It is. Is that the Pantone color of the year is ultraviolet? Mm -hmm. You can't even see ultraviolet. Okay, it's purple, dude. <laughs> it's purple. <laughs> That's why it's ultra. Uh, yeah, this is purple, and it's pretty. They put, you know, it's funny, they put the fingerprint reader in the right place, but I'm so conditioned to it being in the wrong place on all my previous Galaxy phones that I still, I rub the flash. <laughs> I expect the thing to wake up. It does have face recognition. They combine face and iris. It's not quite as fast as Apple's, but because it combines face and iris, it's considered to be pretty darn accurate. Here, I'll show you, see if you can. See it. You'll see the red light come on at the top when I press the button. And that's unlocked. I don't know. Could you see that? Uh, here, do it this mm -hmm. way. Let me do it this way. You can see it a little bit better. So the phone is off. Press the button. Red light comes on. I'm looking at it. Red light comes on. I'm looking at it. You know what? I'm not looking at it. I's I'm looking at the Put TV. your finger. Yeah. <laughs> at that point, you go, okay, I'll use the finger. Screw it. Um, I, I haven't had it long enough to give you a full review. Bixby cannot be turned off. They uh -huh. uh, they have gamified Bixby as they did last time. I have five hundred hundred Samsung. They're gonna addict you to Bixby. Bixby, and Bixby. That ain't gonna happen. Bixby's the worst. They, look at it. Thinks it's it thinks it's taking dictation, and it didn't even come close. <laughs> look how slow it is. However, I do like this. The phone as it comes out of the box is has Google Assistant right on the front there. Hey, okay, oh. Google. That that works fast and understands what I'm saying. So it's another one of those things where app, uh, Samsung's got two different of everything. Samsung, a Samsung service and a Google service. But I'm going to you know, probably put a different launcher on it, disable the Samsung stuff. This is the unlocked one. And I have to say, at least they made the price competitive uh, much lower than the iPhone. It starts at seven twenty for the S9 and the S9 Plus, the bigger one. That's what this is, is $840 unlocked from Samsung. Um, and I think it's going to be a good phone. I'll, I'll give you more. You know, it still has this silly side stuff, which I, I just can't. What's know. the silly side stuff? The edge. The edge oh, thing. Oh, God. It's got a bezel? I turn that off. I always turn that off. Yeah, you slide in from the edge and you get this. Oh, <sighs> okay. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and then, unfortunately, when you slide in from the other end, you get Bixby. <laughs> oh, not Google? <laughs> not something useful? <laughs> no, but... You just put it. Uh, you just put a different launcher. This is what's great about Android. You don't like it? Put a different launcher on, which so I will. You, you, do you get all rid of all the cruff that way? Oh, yeah. launcher. Yeah. It because the only thing that you don't get rid of is Samsung's slightly different implementation of the settings. I settings, actually right. like it, and Samsung does add a lot of I think useful features. It's like the sound check, which you you do a hearing test and it adapts the sound for your headphones to match your hearing. Things like that are are nice additions, I think, to Android. So. I'm. I'm not. I don't dislike what Samsung uh, does with Android. And and if you put a if you put your favorite launcher, I put Action Launcher on. Um, it, you know, is there a regular Android like launcher? Yeah, 
There's oh. you can put Google's own uh, Pixel launcher. You can put it Google. You can. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's why we like Android. See, Apple doesn't it let is you change like the user interface. That you, know, you, you Apple have. prisoners. You. Yeah, I use both. But. Uh, all right, Stacy, you got a thing this week? I do. You guys are gonna <laughs> so love it. Um, okay, let me let me put the link in because I forgot. Oh, looking for the link. I was trying to get the most up to date price, but so far that's not happening. But you're gonna love it because it is a smart ironing system that a friend <laughs> went you know, to the. Thank God you finally got an IoT device appropriate for your gender. Oh, <laughs> I am gonna smack you. Where is my? Where is the Andrew. In our family, I don't iron. Andrew irons because he's actually patient and good at it, and I am not. You know who irons so, in our family? You. Nobody. The laundry. We send it out. <laughs> yes. I'm like, well, is this, this flipper is the ironing board yeah. that saves eighty percent of your time? Not that one, Laura. Nope. That's a Kickstarter. Laura, <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. Laura Star. Laura Star. It's Star. not the Minky Supersize Smart Fit Ironing Board Reflector. <laughs> It is not. It so is, it is not the Star. Oslo Smart Iron. I mean, so, oh, sorry. no, the Oliso. Oliso. Um, Oliso. Oh. I've actually seen this. This one's silly. Okay. Um, it doesn't do anything cool. Okay. But this one <laughs> I'm gonna is find it. really smart. It's the Laura Star. Apparently, there there's a, smart. a big market for uh, smart ironing boards that you search for that and you get a lot of stuff. So what does is this it a do? Smart ironing board or a smart iron? Smart iron. Well, it's it's a smart iron. So it has a sensor in it, and it tracks your motion. So you have to, when you pair it to your phone, it will teach you how to iron better by oh, tracking how you're moving your stuff over your clothes. It also senses <laughs> your clothes, and it says, "Hey, this is, it's self adjusts to whatever it's ironing." Wait a minute, teaches you how to iron better? Uh huh. Oh jeez, does it have an "oh shut up" button? No. Oh. How, no. How hard is it to iron? Yeah. Some people have a hard time. I, so I, I will say, like, I had a pleated skirt. That thing was a bear to iron, oh, man. Yes, of course. Nobody irons pleats. And you also have the wrong equipment. <laughs> you need a pleat ironer. A <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so, but people try. And a lot of times, like, when right. I have dresses or stuff. Anthony anyway, Anthony is, Nielsen, our, one of our great producers, says he needs this. He does not know how to iron. <laughs> See? Okay, does, your, your mother okay. let you down. It, Leo? Yeah. No, he's wearing, uh, actually, it may be, he's, he's wearing Steve Jobs black jeans and a black tur mock turtleneck. You, come here. People don't believe me. You look just like Steve Jobs. So Laura Star is a Swiss company, <laughs> yes. and they are super expensive. Oh, boy. And they also have, and to go with this iron, you can actually buy an accompanying ironing board that, that has like, it's like an air hockey table. It poofs up your clothes so they Ooh. don't crease while you're ironing. I like that. Oh, how that much will this cost? Uh, about $1,400. Oh my God. Jeez. Uh, Can't you just put the clothes in your, in no, your expensive oven? Wait and a minute. Do it? The Laura <laughs> Star Go $2,500 ironing board. Yes, that that is a different one. That is <laughs> who, again. Who, these are what? these are fancy irons. People who can't afford this don't do this. I put a towel they, on my counter and iron on that. That's crazy. I'm just I'm just telling you. I am bringing you the fancy connected home goods. You are that doing that. You me. didn't know that you wanted. Well, yeah, I do is, use when we don't iron, but we do use a steamer if we have to get wrinkles out. And I do, I am fond of steamers, and they also have those. Laura Star makes some very they make expensive. Some expensive steamers. Steam. Sorry, yes. did I call it a steamer? It's a steam generator. Oh, they're they're fancy. <laughs> a new way yeah, of ironing. I I thought this was kind of cool, so you you don't have to, but did you are you getting it? No. Come on. I don't iron. Oh, that's right. There'd be no point. I, well, I, if Andrew it's not washed, it? would Andrew want it? Um, he wants a steamer, actually. Steamers He's are He's asking great. for a steamer for our ready, our 16th wedding anniversary. Oh, <laughs> he is the perfect husband. I will send you, I did some research on steamers and I bought a steamer and I will send you, I can't remember where, it might have been Consumer Reports, but the, the best the best steamer is like $58, by the way. It's Excellent. Not, Send not, it my way. It's not $800. <laughs> uh, right. And it's good, but it's but you got to be careful because it will spit. 
You don't want spit because no. then you get wet. You but uh, See, my dryer has a steamer setting, but I've never used no, it. No, no, no. What you do is you hang the clothes on a nice hanger that has the shape you want. And you mm -hmm. don't put the steamer on the clothing. You just go up and down near it. And it's beautiful. It's just the wrinkles go, whoo, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. It, okay. You know, where I learned about steamers is the wardrobe uh, uh, people at tele in television. They all use steamers. Oh, yeah. That's what they use. They don't iron stuff. Jeff Jarvis, do you have a number? Yes, I do indeed. As soon as I, oops, sorry. There, where'd it go? There it is. Google says it removed more than 3.2 billion bad ads in 2017. Wow. That's like double what it had. And it's uh, double, wow. nearly doubling the 1.7 billion in the year before. That's 100 bad ads per second. So I just want, for Holy, context here. Wait a minute. Per second. Per second. So when you talk about scale, Whoa. this is a problem of scale. So when Al Franken, who I like, but when he went after Facebook saying, rubles, but the ad saw rubles, you should have seen that. That imagines this Bartleby the Scrivener taking in the ad order and everybody's yeah, human no, looking at every yeah, ad order. Says, oh, rubles, yeah. I better look at this. Yeah, They don't know. 100 bad ads, bad ads per second. Wow. Uh, the scale of this is amazing. 79 million ads for sending users to malware-laden sites, 400,000 malware sites, 66 million Trick to click ads and 48 million ads that promoted, that prompted rather, unwanted software installation. So thank you, Google. Very interesting. Friends, we've come to the end of this strange meandering this we call this week in Google. Festival. This festival of oddities and weird facts. I don't know about you, I like it that way. Oh, I know what I should have picked for my thing. What? The uh, the new Raspberry Pi with oh, yeah. power oh, over yes. Ethernet. Isn't this nice? That's amazing. Yes, it is. Three, it is really Raspberry impressive. Raspberry Pi three B, I think it is. Yes. Yes, Model B plus. Three B plus. <laughs> Just in time for Pi Day. Still thirty five dollars. Unbelievable. But dual band eight hundred two dot eleven AC Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's got a 1.4 gigahertz quad core. Quad core 64 bit. Bit 64 bit. Wow. And it's got power over Ethernet for your smart home projects if you're excited. POE um, is really a nice thing. It is. It's very fancy. Because now you don't have to have a power cord. You just have an yep. Ethernet cord that powers it. Bluetooth. I know it's kind of meaningless, but if, 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 if you tried to buy a computer with the power of that Raspberry Pi 10 years ago, what would it have cost? Oh, that's a good question. That's a really know. good question. I would Ten love... years ago? Well, pick a, pick a date. Pick a date. Beyond a certain point, you couldn't have gotten it. Right. Yeah. It's I amazing. will do that. Uh, I will do well, that math and come up for your, uh, with it for you uh, next week. Well, this particular Broadcom processor is an ARM processor, and so yeah, there wasn't even a 64-bit. Yeah, it's kind of hard to... But, capable. But, yeah. So I'm buy, I'm getting a new laptop before next week. I'll probably have it. The Windows laptop that runs on a Snapdragon 835. It runs on an ARM processor running full Windows 10. And and this is kind of an interesting transition point where, you know, this is an 845 in this 9+. plus. These are desktop class processors at this point, you know, and uh, and so that's become, now it becomes very, very interesting, I think. So I won't I won't compare it to an ARM chip from 10 years ago. I'll compare it to an Intel chip from 10 years ago, probably through benchmarks. Yeah, a quad core 1.4 gigahertz processor. You can't even do that. You're going to I'm going to have to do like Geekbench and see what the geek if somebody will run a Geekbench on the Raspberry Pi Model B plus. And then we can ah, see what the Geekbench okay. of 10 years ago to get a comparable Geekbench. I guarantee you it's thousands, Jeff. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Guarantee you. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of money. Yeah. And it would have run hot. <laughs> and it would have run hot. You'd have <laughs> yes, to have liquid very cooling. Loud fans. For sure. Yeah. yeah. It is really cool. Um, it's just, it's just really Who cool. started Raspberry Pi? Uh, it was. Oh, oh. Uh, Eben. Eben yeah. Upton. Eben Upton. Who, Eben yes. Upton, who is a delightful person who I have interviewed on separate occasions. And every time I walk away, just like, oh, you're what humanity should be. He we've inter we've yeah, had him on triangulation. Project, yeah. He's a young guy. He's 39. Uh, he uh, wanted to duplicate something that many English kids had grown up with. The, yep. The, uh, Sinclair. Well, the BBC computer, the Acorn, the, the Sinclair. Yeah. These cheap 
Clive Sinclair came up with like a seventy dollar cheap computer, and uh, and he realized what a difference that had made in his life, and so he created this for schools. He was director of studies in computer science at St. John's. And uh, did he make well any as, money from this? I don't think so. No, but um, he made there's a career. A raspberry. He made a career. Yeah, it's a foundation. Yeah. It's a foundation, oh, yeah. and now they have like certified teachers and that sort of yeah. thing. And he's, I feel like, no, I won't say, I, I don't know. I don't feel like anything. He's a but great he says guy. that people always bring him raspberry pies, and he's actually not fond of them because <laughs> raspberry <laughs> pie is not as delicious as other kinds of pie. It so isn't. he's blueberry like, pie would be better. Oh, blueberry yeah. He talks pie. about it getting all gummy and kind yeah. of the seeds and stuff. And I'm like, I'm with you, man. No, raspberry should not be made into pie. It's like my so grandmother. You, I, I I had her carrot cake once when I was five years old and said it was good. For the rest of her life, I had to eat the damn carrot cake. By the oh way, my that, gosh, that happens in my miserable. house all the time. Broadcom uh, makes the chip in it, but he is now technical director at Broadcom. And of course, the other tech news, which we didn't report on, oh, was yeah. that yeah. Uh, President Trump earlier this week nixed the deal. Broadcom was trying to buy Qualcomm, and he said, for national security reasons, I'm going to block that, period. End of story. What do we think of that? It's over. I don't know what to think of it. I don't um, either. I didn't see much analysis of it. So it was a little... Before Trump came in, um, is it Cepheus, Cepheus, the committee on, you know who I'm talking about, guys, right? Don't. Um, uh, it's the committee on foreign investment. They've scuttled other deals. Uh, I'm going to find out who it is and what. Committee on foreign investment. Okay. Yes. So Cepheus, I don't know. It's Cepheus. Um, oh, yeah, because it's got said, U.S. So Cepheus, yeah. C-F-I-U-S, yeah. yeah. It's like, a treasury, whatever it is. It's treasury department. Well, yes. Um, and they they look at these types of deals. They actually, when, oh, was it Huawei wanted to buy 3Com? Uh. They nixed that. So this is what they do. So they were actually looking at this and they said, hey, we have a lot of strategic technology. Do we want this to go to Broadcom? Right. Which after it's no longer domiciled in the U.S. What is interesting to me is Trump actually, before the deal was announced, met with Hawk Tan, the CEO of Broadcom, back in like October of to last year. To celebrate the fact they were coming back to the U.S. Yes, to celebrate the jobs and the, the, yeah. the Broadcom was doing more here. So I thought this was like, it felt very much like Trump doesn't, he's not aware of it. And then someone puts it across of his desk and they're like, this is bad. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see how this is bad. Check. Yeah, I don't think he could make a, a credible case one way or the other for why uh, he blocked it, to be honest. But I'm not sure it's a bad mm -hmm. idea. Broadcom is repatriating. They're coming back to the United States. Uh, but right now they're headquartered in Singapore. Qualcomm certainly has many patents. It has all the CDMA patents and many LTE patents. And so that there might be a legitimate national concern, security concern. I'm not, a, I'm not against the idea, frankly. Uh, Qualcomm is... Uh, really two companies. The The company that makes money is the patent holding company and the company that makes chips does all right, but it's not nearly the profit uh, center. They don't the make are. chips. They design, design chips. Design chips, they... pardon me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. Systems on a chip. No, no, that's a, a, a completely apt uh, correction. So, oh, guys, we talked about food go too have much because now I'm starving. Go have barbecue. If what I lived in Austin, nice. I'd be on my way. There is a place out a little bit farther that we always go when we go to Austin. We didn't go this time that has the best Mexican food and it has wonderful tequila. It's on that avenue, the going out of town. I can't remember the name of it, but it's really I think good. I know which one you're reading. Go yeah. there now. And have the avenue going out of town? But we have many avenues. There's Congress. <laughs> there's, there's Brazos. There's San Jacinto. I can't oh, remember. Oh, is it Gueros? Yes, Gueros. Isn't okay. it good? It's all right. What? <laughs> What's your favorite? My favorite Mexican food in Austin is probably El Chile. Oh, okay. Because I like their molo, mole. Oh, and then we there's were talking this, mole. We were talking yeah, there's, mole. There's a restaurant called Las Palomas that's actually, weirdly enough, in a strip mall in Westlake. And that is yeah. freaking delicious. So you're, you're more sophisticated. But we did have a tradition of going. It's on South Congress. We used to have a tradition of going out to Gueros every time we went to, uh, to Austin. Only a 7.7. .7. So it's never. not, I mean, 
just Mexican food. I'll eat any of it. It's a tourist. It's a tourist destination. I'm a tourist. No, no, no. It's a, it's a, we we used to eat there. It's not true. I mean, okay. now because South Congress is kind of crazy, it yeah, is. But yeah. Thank you everybody for being here. Stacy Higginbotham. Find her at Stacy on IOT.com. You really must subscribe to her newsletter. And once again, Stacy, my deepest thanks for hooking us up with uh, Wendy Nather and Bo Woods and that great panel. We've been showing it over and over again. We did it South by last Friday. It was fantastic. Thank you for yes, your help with thank that. Thank you. It was super fun. Yeah, super fun. Uh, and in fact, I think we're going to do more of that. So stay tuned. Uh, we really enjoyed it. I thought, it, and I, you know, we, it went so smoothly. We thought we could do this. We could do this more at other events. We should do this more. Get out and see Play the on world. the road. Come to New York. Yeah, yeah well, exactly. Uh, that's, that's where Jeff Jarvis hangs his hat. He's a professor of journalism at the uh, Tau... Night School of Journalism at uh, the City University of New York, where some very lucky students, graduate students, get to work with the best. He also blogs at buzzmachine.com and has written many a book, including Geeks. And Bearing. I'm privileged to be here most every week. It is our privilege, Jeff. Thank you, both of you, for being here. And we'll see you next time on This Week in Google. Bye-bye.